T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Lift off. Does that feel good? Yeah. Whoa. Hey, guys. We caught you. You did. <laughs> now I'm choking them on spit. Listen, we can't so we, have a one host show. Calm down. But, well, true. But we're without Stevie Fast Jackson tonight. I'm going to tell you why. So today was the International Brazilian Underwater Basket Weaving Tournament uh, day one. Due to a an influx of rogue locust, they had to take ground in or take cover, excuse me, in underground bunkers. Stevie is currently uh, just like you were when you sat against the wall in like middle school. The tornado drill is apparently the position he's in. Could not get his computer working, and uh, <clears throat> the tournament started late. So Stevie is now currently finding a snorkel, going under the water, going to start weaving baskets tonight. Now I'm going to tell you what really happened. No, no shit. Not three seconds before we started this, we found out we had no CV. We oh, had yeah. no plan for this. In fact, I sent him a text at you know, 729 and said, we're starting without you, Stephen. And then Matt got word that he's not joining us. And my son is raising him in the background. So what? Go ahead, Courtney. We made the little intro tonight. So unfortunately, we do not have Stevie Pastor Jackson. Oh, he wants to talk. You remember to mute that. I did. There it goes. We've got Richard Freeman coming on tonight, guys. We've got a ton of stuff we want to talk to him about, but we're going to have him on for about 30 minutes. We're going to quickly transition to Victor Alvarez, the man. The man yeah, give Nash a beer, says Double O Shit Show. Uh, I talked some snowbird stuff, going to talk some off-season things, and then we're going to try something. This could be an epic failure, or this could be really cool. We've got some links set out for some people to come on, and we're going to have a little Friendsgiving dinner. We're going to have a happy hour where some of our favorite friends are going to hop on and um, do some Q&A with you, the fans, and maybe talk some uh, some things we're thankful for, some things we're not so thankful for, and just the year that we've had here at Shake and Bears. Like fajitas. Like fajitas. So um, we'll do an... In Stevie fast form, Lyle, what you been up to since we talked to you last? So uh, I know we announced on the last show that I'd finalized my deal with Scott Tidwell. Um, I will race the NHRA Pro Modified season in its, in its entirety. Um, Pro Mod had a rule change today. Matt, I'm going to send you the picture. We can – I should not pull you up. Uh, we can pick that up later. But um, we were kind of unsure what we were going to start the year with as far as power adders concerned, some form of supercharger. Uh, it looks as though that the pro charger has been helped tremendously um, today. So more than likely, that's what we'll start the year with. Uh, I've been working on some sponsorship stuff for that. Um, obviously still looking for some. Uh, I also nailed the deal down with Scott and his team to run all three of the big uh, pro mod races at Bradenton, uh, the Snowbirds, U.S. Street Nationals, and then World Series, should I be invited um, so that's what I've been doing. No beer money racing whatsoever. We're in the middle of a nightmare of a house remodel. My lovely 17 month old is, uh, in the test, his parents, uh, time of his life. It's just busy, man. MacFab's wide open. We do have a black Friday sale. So if you guys are MacFab fans, we have a swag pack bundle. You can buy if you need bead locks, even if you don't need bead locks, just get them anyway. They, they look cool. And I work there. So yeah, and then you can come let us know that you did, and then maybe we'll figure something out where we we start doing these giveaways with the MacFab people. But you got to prove you bought something. And it's same goes for Flow. You should go get a subscription just simply because Courtney's on the show. Sometimes more so, more often than Stevie. Well, this is the first time I'm honestly kind of in my feels about it. So this is the first time that we've done one since y'all decided that I was such a pillar of this show. This is the first one we've done without all three of us, and we even skipped that month. So that it wouldn't be without the three of us. So uh, so this is big. We're going to need you guys. We want you in the comments. We're going to engage through this whole thing. This is Friendsgiving. But let's talk about what nope. I've been up to. Nope. What have you been doing? Yeah. Let's talk about what I've been up to. So I've been busy. 
we had, we won a championship. I had a birthday. We did the banquet. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. I spent a day in California decompressing, came home and crashed and slept for like 72 hours straight because this has been the longest whirlwind of my life. I know somebody, Luke, Dion's going to say, we know, we know, we know. I was gone for three straight months and it sucked and it's over and I'm in my own bed. So excited to be in my own bed that I bought freaking new sheets yesterday. How excited was your dog? Oh, he was so excited. The first night he did not leave, like would not let me get out of bed till like 10 a.m. Just snuggled up. Won't do it. We went and got in the car the other day and I think he thought I was leaving again. And he was like, bitch, do not. So... Not doing so, it. I'm not going to Snowbirds. I don't think we're going to talk about that with Victor here in a minute. That's a sensitive subject. Um, you're not going at all. I don't think so. PRI is the following week. It's very stacked with PRI this week because it's just a little bit. Usually, there's that week between. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I work for a, a large company where they've got to be careful of when and where they send their people and how often. And PRI is is one of those things. So. Um, Unfortunately, I mean, I'm going to be very fluid with this and uh, we just kind of had to make a decision and I don't really know what's going to happen with that, but uh, I'm going to maybe, maybe not. But as of right now, I don't think I'm going for flow. So we'll just have to go with the flow and figure that out. But I will be working the event from home. I don't know. I'll be uh, working with my production guys on highlights and results and stuff, but uh, there's still a little part of me that thinks that uh, I'll get that, that text. So we do have Richard Freeman coming on tonight at what, eight? We do here in just a minute. Well, we're in, Richard and I are both in God's country. You're alone on the East Coast now. So in about 20 minutes, Richard Freeman will be no, on God's country. Y'all got that middle of the mall shit time going on. We're over here on the right side of the country at the right hand of God. East Coast standard time. Like Dr. Rio says, we meet in the middle. Where all where all the best drag racing happens, whether you can where you can go from the mountains to the beach, six hours. Don't listen. Don't argue with me on this. Fine. I win. Fine. I'll let you, you have win. it. I'm not like, I'll let you have it. I'll do something I usually don't and just say, you're right, Lyle. Let's move on. Let's talk about Pomona. Okay. So that's two. So <clears throat> I was, I, I paid close attention to what people were saying on the internet about I was, I was, to be honest, I was more focused on the top field championship than I was anything else. Simply yeah, it was the tightest. I'm a big Leah fan, right? I like Tony Short racing a lot. Um, but I was one of those that really wanted to see Doug Coletta win the championship. He deserves it. Connie deserves it. The Coletta family, that whole team deserves it. And it was one of those tough deals where like, well, it'll just be whoever goes the farthest. Well, lo and behold, obviously they end up in the final. One run How decides it all. Cool. And it was a pretty good race. Um, but I hey, thought it was before great. You, before you go, fun fact there, I learned that's the first time that that's happened in Top Fuel where final round winner take all since 1991. And what race was that? What? Who was in that race? I didn't go that far. All I know is we did it in 2014, but in I mean, Top Fuel, were, it was 1991. Were, I don't know who did it. You were 20 then, so you should remember. <clears throat> was I 21? <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, that was really cool going through the day of seeing, you know, everybody just knowing that each round, it absolutely matters. And that's the difference of Pomona. And I don't care if people think we're just blowing smoke, but that vibe when you're there on Sunday morning at what is it now? In and out burger drag Pomona dragway. The air is just different. And especially for top fuel, you know, funny car was decided that morning, which we'll talk about in a minute, but pro stock was pretty much in the bag. We knew Gage Herrera had run away with it in the bag, but all eyes were on top fuel. And I think that my pro stock folks may disagree here, but like, that's how it should be. It's absolutely yeah. how it should be. Yeah. I, I thought it would have been cool to see Tony Stewart double up. Um, and Leah being a friend and, and that whole crew are, are good people. But I do, I do think that Doug Coletta winning the championship is, is the way that it should have gone. When they called all the winners up on stage. So the race happened. We'll talk about that in a second too. Race happens but they bring the world champions back up regardless if they won the race or not. So Doug Coletta was the only one, no, Gage Herrera also, who won the race and won the championship. So they do all of the champions. They're all standing up on stage together. They bring them back down, and then one by one, they bring them up to interview them. Fans are all right around there. They brought Doug Coletta up, and I am not kidding you. That place erupted. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, they're going to start – 
yelling, screaming, probably 90 second ovation. Then just simultaneously, the entire crowd started going, Dougie, Dougie, Dougie. And I was like, I had tears in my eyes. I'm not kidding you. It was one of the coolest things where when you're as embedded in drag racing as we are, especially on my end where I watch all these things happen, I have the coolest spot in the house of watching this stuff happen. But I kind of took back and it's one of those moments where I made myself really look around and was like, this is fucking history. Yeah. I am standing here. Doug Coletta's got tears in his eyes. The crowd screaming, Dougie, like confetti is falling from the sky. Champagne is everywhere. That is a moment that NHRA drag racing has needed so badly, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do want to, I saw a comment in here about Clay deserves 74 points. And I want to wait to talk about that along with the things surrounding an HRA tech when Richard gets on, because I kind of want to let him twist on his beard, uh, take an extra bite down on his Copenhagen and rip off on that one, because I think he'll probably have some, some good, probably some testy things to say, but I want to save that for when Richard comes on. We may um, even, um, we may even, Clay is a favorite here at Shake and Bake. He may be at our friend's giving table at the end of the show we never know for sure we never um, know we got anything else for pomona um i just on a selfish front i want to say that i thought it was really cool that aaron stanfield won because he's had a car that can win he's a fantastic driver um i'm a fan of his for a lot of reasons but his wife was literally like about to be in labor as we were starting race day and he was kind of panicking all day like what am i going to do i'm x amount of hours away from it and of course, when you, not that he wanted to lose and go home, nobody wants to, but one of those days where it's the longest race day ever is when you need to go home. And yep. um, so we're waiting for the winner's circle and he's just like, I'm leaving. Like, do I have to do this? I'm going to go get on the plane and go home. And he won the race, first race of the season that he won, uh, went home and wife gave birth to an awesome little boy named Rowdy. So if you've ever heard a race car driver named Rowdy Stanfield, my gosh, we've got one coming in hot. And he is super cute. And I just thought that that was a really, really cool poetic ending to a, a struggling season for Team White over at Elite. So uh, not to get off subject, but have you followed along with Motion Race Works this week or this past week? And they're, they are picking a random order from their website orders for a specific day, calling no. the people and refunding them their money. What? So Cletus Garrett Mitchell came up with this and they are... So like if you went on there today and placed an order for some merchandise, maybe a shift or whatever, and Doug goes through the orders randomly and pictures out, they call you random and they refund you your money and still send you your parts, but you get your order for free essentially. And I asked Doug if we could call the winner on the show tonight and he's going to let us do it so in a minute or not in a minute, in a little bit, he's going to send me the info. We're going to call this guy live on the show and tell him that he's getting his order for free. Oh, see, this is cool. Guys, we literally have no plan for this show. No. <laughs> we were going to just kind of banter between the three of us. So now we're getting all kinds of stuff. I want to, um, we're doing really good on time here. I want to go through and answer a couple of these questions here. Um, one that I've gotten a lot. So I had a big week. You'd think I have a lot of like girthy questions. The question I've gotten the most since Eric won the championship was why I got in trouble by the NHRA official on the top end. Did you see that in the TV coverage? No. <laughs> so I'm driving down the return road. Well, I'm not driving. And I have the shirt, the new six pack shirt. Yeah. You're texting and not paying attention to me. I, I'm getting a post out about the motion race where it's giveaway. Keep going. Anyway. I have the shirt. I'm being extra like normal and I'm flying the shirt on the golf cart and the fans are going crazy. It was a really cool moment, right? We get to yeah. the end of the return road and I guess they had me on the TV and the NHRA guy at the fence told me to sit down on the golf cart. Your girl did not sit down and she had some choice words for him and your girl was on TV having choice words to the official telling her to sit down. So that's what happened there. Um, I was told I couldn't stand on the golf cart and my exact words were, yeah, I'll get right on that. And I did not sit down. So um, that's one of the first rules I've broken all year though. I haven't gotten in trouble by an HRA all year. So I'd say it's pretty okay. Um, so I want to get, uh, I guess my, uh, my better judgment. Hmm? And I was tagged in a post around some street outlaw stuff. And 
this uh, I had this argument with some people before earlier in the year about guessing the instant green tree. I know we're all over the place, but I did not want to forget about this. And I want to talk a little bit about the general no prep Kings fan, right? And I also want to talk about something that Jim Howell posted earlier this week about the no prep Kings car showing times. So we'll start with that. Go for it. When you're Courtney as a fan, when you go to a drag strip, you go, you grew up different than going to the racetrack different than the way I did in the Southeast. But when you go to a racetrack and there are no times shown, are you as interested and as engaged as if the times are shown? Absolutely not. So, and we see this on flow. We try and stream these no time races and it's tough. So grow, even growing up here, like grudge racing is huge in the Southeast. It's primarily what kept some of these, small time drag strips open with the exception of their bracket programs, which is what keeps drag racing alive period. But, and I agree, like I race no time stuff. I drive some no time cars for some people like, and I do it, but it is not as fun. You know, like I don't enjoy it as much as from a fan's perspective. I don't know how, and I'm not knocking the no time world. We need it. It's cool. We need it. And when you're in it and you know, all the little nuances and the grudges and the things people have been through, but everything's so secretive that the fan can't know. Right. So Jim Howe posted asking, you know, in general, is it good or bad if no prep Kings start showing times? And I saw, I mean, most of the people that were saying no were either no prep Kings, not actors, racers, actors, racers, um, some fans, but a lot of your general fans like, yeah, we want to at least see mile per hour or at least one. And I don't know from a racer standpoint, if you don't want to show, there's probably a more in-depth reason that some of these would give us, but I don't know if it's because of, you don't want them to know how slow you are or how fast you are or Both. somewhere in, in between. Right. But I think personally, they've done it long enough, no time that there's some kind of change got to happen beyond personnel. Like you've got to get some new faces in there now in my opinion like it's getting clapped out it's the same five or six winning all year long most of the time there's guys in there that have been doing it since day one that have never won one of these deals ain't never gonna like it's time to mix it up somehow um an argument that started under that post which is where i got involved was surrounding the tree <clears throat> and these there were some people in there that we were talking about if you red light on an instant green tree then you've guessed, which is true. Like you can't red light if you see green. And then there were some fans in there that were commenting that were like, well, you guys as professional racers, y'all are just guessing on a 400 tree. You know, and I got in there and started arguing about, no, it's really a reaction. And these fans, they, like the, the, the general fan has zero idea what's going on out there, period. They are following a personality, which I think that's good, but they're going to lose interest at some point too. And I think that that series somehow, some way has to make a change. They're not going to go quarter mile, which is what some people suggested. But I think that they have to start showing times or something. They've got to do something to change it up. Um, now they continue to pack places out, which is good. You know, there's all these rumors about the TV show going away. And I was just going to ask you what you've heard. And all the, I've, all I've heard is that they have no TV uh, show. Next. There will be, this season will be aired next year, but there will be no TV show filmed moving forward is what I've been told. All of the No Prep Kings cast members say otherwise. Are they saying that because they have to? You know, under contract, do they have to say it's continuing on? I don't know. Or don't is know. the answer something we just are not privy to yet? Well, could be that too, but... I feel like we may get some answers in the near future. We are going to have uh, Justin Shreer, Big Chief, on the show. <laughs> here in the, here in the coming I just weeks. got a text. Breaking fucking news. I just got a text of somebody who may want to come on the end that's going to just blow this thing out of the water. Blow it out the freaking water. Um, also, I just got a text because I am Gossip Girl XOXO um, that they may be going pay-per-view next year. That's a rumor that they're going pay-per-view. All right, so... All, I heard that too. I did hear that. And there was all of this speculation about that being a complete dumpster fire and it will completely tank the show. I don't know how that will go. I, don't, I mean, if they choose you guys or. I was going to say, if they do it, they give your girl a call. So no idea what they're doing. 
but uh, Doug needs like a 30 second plug so he can rip it from the show and post it on the motion page. So in just a few minutes, right here live up. on the shake. I just lined up the greatest surprise guest ever. You just you just ruined my plug for Motion Race Work. I'm so You're sorry, right. Motion Race Work. Start over. <clears throat> In just a few minutes, we are going to announce the winner of Motion Race Works Pay Your Tab giveaway. So for those of you that don't know on here, if you post if if you buy something through the Motion Race Works website here over the next few days, every day Doug and his crew are going in and choosing a random order, pulling it from a hat. Calling this people, calling these people, refunding them their money, and still sending you the parts. So you essentially get your order for free. And right here, live on the Shake and Bake Show, momentarily, we're going to call the next winner and announce on here and to him that he is getting his Motion Race Works order for free in the Motion Race Works Pay Your Tab giveaway. Do you want to do that before Richard or in between Richard and Victor? Mm -hmm. I feel like if people know we're going to do it, maybe it'll give some time for people to give it, get on. Okay. I don't know. What do you think? An hour later. Listen, we got no rules. Dad's gone. The kids are playing. I'll get, this will give Doug time to post it. And stuff. Let's do it between Richard and Victor. Okay. We can do But that. don't let me forget. Oh, okay. So I've become dad. <laughs> That's perfect. That's freaking perfect. So we were talking about Street Outlaws, and I kind of made some notes because I went to, as we know, World Cup Finals, which was gnarly. We talked about that a little bit. But uh, what did you think about um, old John Odom's success there? What success? I mean, he runnered up or went to the semis or something. Okay. He's got a pro mob. I'm just trying to get you talking about him. There's nothing to talk about. Like that class is so spread out. Like this it, is what I want. Go. It is impressive that like that six cylinder went out there and went five fifty, whatever it went, two hundred and sixty some miles an hour. I can't remember exactly what it went. But like the problem with, in my opinion, with those cars of that caliber at that race is they never make it to the end. You know what I mean? Like that dude didn't win. You know what I mean? Yeah, but do you think, and I'm going to be devil's advocate here, because we're so fragmented in the world of drag racing, and those MPK guys kind of stand on an island of their own, and we integrate everything everywhere else. But uh, being there, they definitely get treated different. I don't think it's better. Like, you think it might be better. I don't think it's necessarily worse, but it's definitely not better. They just get treated different. But um, I think it gives MPK a little bit of shot in the arm that they need when they go to real races and, warranted or not, do something, you know? I mean, yeah, it's just that, and I'm not saying this because it's scrotum. He was pretty nice to me, by the way. I'm saying this because that class at that race is just simply a home run derby. Like it's not, it, it's, it's real drag racing, but those guys, like you, if you show up there with the fastest car or the fastest car that shows up there, most of the time doesn't win. It's somebody that can just go the distance, which I know that's a, that is a marathon race anyway. Like the other classes are much better racing. It is. The, you just got to get through it. Then the unlimited ish classes, you know, that go on, like it's much better racing on, on down the line there, but no, I'm not giving him credit credit for what. I just wanted to stir it up a little bit. I was yeah. just most excited about our PBRA I got the world, guys. I got the world fastest GTR. No, remember he yelled at me for saying that it's not, it is a GTR. And then other people yelled at me, but I will say um, it was pretty cool because this is so petty, but I don't care. I'm petty. Um, watching people get stuck on the starting line is like my favorite pastime of events like that. And bless her heart, his girl that he had with her, she got stuck in the most fabulous of fashions and had to be pulled out. And it was honestly pretty good. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> Would you ever bring anybody out there to get stuck there? Let's go through a few of these real quick before. Oh, Eric is here. I got excited. Eric is here. Chase Freeman's here. Don O'Neill's here. Selena's up in the house. My mother is here. Who else is up in the house tonight? And let's see. Oh, see. Okay. Read some of these comments, Lyle. Before Richard gets on, we'll finish this MPK conversation about people talking about uh, 
things that they can do. NP class cars. Why wouldn't they just show times? Um, somebody said something about the tires and I lost it. So what would be, what would be your answer to fixing that? Lyle? Do you bring on NHRA stars to do grudge matches? Do you integrate the audiences? What do you do? No, they won't do that because if you start bringing real racers in there and they start outrunning their showcase boys, it's bad for their brand. Um, so, you know, somebody like, um, an Alex Laughlin that's kind of done both, right? Like if he truly commits and goes over there and is a part of their thing and, and drinks their Kool-Aid and does their deal, then I feel like they'll kind of let him in and let him do his thing. But I don't think they're going to let anybody go back and forth. Um, but like, you know, people have asked all along, you know, if, if Stevie thinks it's so easy, why don't he just come on over? Because they won't let him, you know, he could do all that. I mean, Manny Bajinga proved that. Yeah, he went over there and just ass spanked people in the in the run what you brung or race your way in or futures deal. And they weren't they're not going to let him in. He's too that team and him as a driver and everything they've got. They're too good. Um, And it would ruin the little deal they've got going there. So I don't know that you're going to get out. Go out with a bang. I don't know that you're going to you're going to see any crossover guys roll up in there and start running like. I, in my opinion, Justin Swanstrom. Should I take this um, live? Yes. Hi. Hi. All right. I'm on this, trying to get on this deal. Yeah. Oh, that browser based live. That's what I get on. You got it. All right. Let me see if I can, I'll see if I can get on this motherfucker. <laughs> We're ready for you. Whatever you're ready. You just let a motherfucker know. What well, says. To enter the entering the stu, to enter the studio. Is that That's what, what I do? Yep. That's Lyle. He's saying yeah. Okay. Uh, unmute. <laughs> it's like having your grandpa come on your podcast. <laughs> I don't know how to operate this shit. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Yeah, just that should be the way to go. You'll have to type in your name. I just took your call live on the air. Oh, no, hey, motherfucker. Oh, now he's gone. Do you, as soon as he got on, I got an accent. Yeah, I kicked him out. Where were we at? I was right um, in the middle of a rant. Oh, uh, we were talking about how you said that the they wouldn't bring those stars in because it would ruin their whole circus. In my opinion, that's why... I, they haven't done it or won't do it. Now it could be, oh, I was talking about Justin Swanstrom. Like in my opinion, I feel like he did it at the perfect time and the right way. Like they showed up, didn't really run great, wrecked a car. People think, ah, oh, this, you know, this ass clown, it never going to be anything. They get their shit together and he rolls up in there in year one and goes to smacking people around. Yeah. And it was kind of like, Ugh, we've let him in now. What do you do? You know? And, and he's done well. Like, he's got his own team. He's one of the premier guys in the show. But I, in my opinion, the way it looked from the outside looking in is when they let him in to the to the Invitational, it was kind of like, ah, he'll never he'll never amount to much over here. And then he did. You know, and I, don't, I, don't, I think that they may have learned something from that, and they're not just going to let anybody slip up in there and ruin the show. I could be wrong, but that's just the way, that's I the think, way it makes sense. I think you're right, and um... – I don't, I don't claim that he told me this, but just gathering whenever I worked for him and, and things were kind of maybe transpiring with Alex on that front too. I think that was, that was a general consensus that they didn't want to say, but said where we're going to keep them separate, but hell we invited them over. I don't know if anybody remembers Indy. I don't remember if it was pre COVID or during COVID, but um, a couple of them came to the U S nationals and ran pro mod. And like, we let them run at the back of the pack to try and get, crowds in there broke a few rules to let him and and that shit just didn't work in our world either and it just goes to show we have this conversation in um at flow all the time that we're just such a fragmented sport that maybe they don't belong together yeah we've uh <coughs> we've got richard back we can go right. ahead and bring him on the biggest struggle of tonight's show is lyle or i don't have control of anything going on the screen nothing hi big hi hey hey big What's up? We're, we were just talking about how you were a big sponsor of uh, Justin Swanstrom in the in the No Prep Kings and how, I love how great Justin it. Justin Swanstrom. 
Richard, tell yeah. us where you're at. You look like you're in a comfortable spot. I'm at my ranch. Look. See all my buddies? Hey, buddies. Hey, buddies. Hi. Fireplace. Man, Man Courtney, yeah. we must not we must not be buddies. I didn't get that invite, did no, you? No, I got the invite. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Bam. Who well, else I there, Richard? Well, I fucking didn't. I have Mike Trumbull, Scott Cascio, Tommy Cascio, Kendall by God Long, Brian Lane, Sandy, Cooper, everybody. I bet y'all ain't I bet y'all ain't told a lie one. Uh, Trumbull has. That's all he does is lie. Hey, do me a favor. And this is real elite motorsport shit. Your phone, take your phone and rub this part of it to clear that lens off. Oh my God. You look like a gosh damn Casper. All right, hang on. He does, he does what I say, oh, everybody. Backside. There. No, we not go. the back side. No, the front. He said the front. I'm stupid. There's that. <laughs> they front. told him to do it and he did. <laughs> Where's the camera at? On the front. I'm on the front. You're fine now. We're good. No, we're not. It looks, it's worse now than it was. Like it's you dropped fine. it in a mud hole. He's there we Jesus go. Christ. It's good. <laughs> well, Richard, we've been waiting for you to come on the Shake and Bake show. And I'm a little sad that Stevie's not on here tonight because I feel like y'all could have talked some tech stuff, but Lyle and I are gonna we're gonna handle this shit. So thanks for finally coming on. Where's Stevie at? He's in Brazil. He had a team meeting or something that he couldn't make it for. Oh. I well, think he was perfect. just scared that you were coming on. Yeah. So um first things first, before we get into the nitty-gritty of what we really want to talk about, um Let's talk about last weekend. I feel like um, we struggled beginning of the year, but you went out with a bang just like you always do. Eric went in the championship and Aaron Stanfield. What kind of exclamation point does that have for the offseason for you? That's fantastic, I can tell you. You know, we give, them a, we give them a free run at the first seven races and we were absolutely horrible. And, uh, you know, when the, when the time counted, we were there. So uh, it was all good. And uh, bringing Jeggy back, I'm just going to breeze through these few questions that I have and we can get into tech stuff, but I, a lot of different stuff on the internet. Apparently Lyle doesn't want to hang out either. Um, give the real life about to die. out of the horse's mouth, the purpose of Jeg Coughlin Jr. coming back these last two races. Uh, to shake down Erica's new car, <clears throat> we uh, Mark thought it was important to get to run that thing before we went to Bradenton and uh, – what a better person to have do it. Um, Jag, Jag was ready. And Lyle, are you okay? Are we going to do this interview or are you going to puke? I had to burp, Richard. Okay. Well, quit drinking, you fucking idiot. <laughs> this show is a cocktail-oriented show, Big. Stupid. Yeah, where, yeah, where's your cocktail? I don't drink. He does not. Oh. Mm. Every now and then I'll have a glass of wine, but that's it. Okay. He is good for a good bottle of wine. And I, I say bottle, uh, not glass turned into a bottle here. Yeah. Oh, it's a bottle. Anyway, with... back to what we were talking about before Richard derailed this fucking thing. <clears throat> You're right. What I could not think of anybody better to shake that thing down than Jeg. And I mean, how long has it been since the dude shook had driven a pro stock car? Three years. Right. So, and he gets in there and looks like he drove it yesterday. Yeah, we went to Tulsa, made two no three runs and uh put it in a box and went straight to Vegas and uh I mean, he's he can drive anything. It doesn't matter what you uh, what you put him in, and uh, always been a great teammate, and we loved having him out there. So Let's, late in the year, when the, when a championship's coming down to the wire, and you have a team as big as you have, um, now granted, I've been a part of it um, <clears throat> for the past two years, three years, and obviously, I want to see y'all win no matter what. But you hear all the rumblings, obviously, from other teams, from haters of the program, haters of Erica herself or whatever, that when it comes down late in the year and you start using the, the, the people you have in place to, let's call it block, you know, whatever you want to do. If you have a team the size that you have and you have the caliber of drivers that you have and you only have one that can win the championship, why wouldn't you do that? Right. Like. I'm not saying that you guys go down there and lay down for each other. That's not what I'm saying. But if the opportunity is there to ensure that Elite Motorsports wins the championship over KB or whoever else, why would you not do that? Well, I mean, we <laughs> – um, That laugh, listen, though. We do what it takes to win championships. 100%. And uh, coming into Dallas, uh, uh, TJ had an opportunity. Uh, Aaron had an opportunity. And uh, – 
Those didn't work out. TJ blew a motor up. Aaron had a, a, a malfunction, and that put her in the driver's seat. And so uh, when we went went from there, went to Vegas, um, it was, uh, you know, it was all hands on deck. I, I'll tell you, I've got a lineup of drivers um, that uh, are possibly some of the best, and they all believe in the team program, and uh, that's what we do. And, uh, I mean, it goes from the Quadras, uh, Aaron Stanfield, all of them, TJ, uh, Bo, I mean, everybody knows the deal. And it's no secret that Erica's the flagship car. Listen, there would be none of them without her. Uh, end of story. So, um, you know, all I have to say, Ingersoll says it best. The uh, scorecard says 10 years, six championships. That's our report card. So, um you know, I will tell you, though, know, we got, uh, I didn't get told personally, but Erica got told uh, in Pomona that everything that uh, she's she's got or had has come easy. And, and uh, I can, whoever says that is the stupidest son of a bitch on the planet because they do not know where I come from. And I come from the bottom of the ditch and... I, I don't I don't take kindly to none of that. That's stupid. So well, yeah. it's <clears throat> there's a I've had a bunch of requests after I announced my deal with Tidwell for twenty four and whatnot. All these guys are like, how does somebody like you just fall into these deals? Right. Like j j just like they think that, well, how can I how can I find somebody that will just let me get in the seat of their car? You know, and like, well, and, and first of all, it's not like and I'll tell you, you would tell anybody that asked you, I didn't just come over there and drive for you for free. Right. No, You know, like, and nobody does that, you know, no. but at the same time I came over there and paid what I had to pay, did what I had to do. And we got in there and we had a lot of success. Right. You know, and I, I a hundred percent contribute to my two years driving for you and for elite motorsports for the reason that I'm driving for Scott Tidwell next year anyway. Right. Well, you I know, think like, if you, if you ask Scott and I know, you know, this, I mean, he come up to me on the start line in Las Vegas and he said, Hey, uh, thinking about maybe maybe doing something with Lyle, what's your thoughts? And first of all, I wouldn't do anything without talking to you. And the first thing I said was, absolutely. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Um, you know, there there again, Lyle. Nobody knows. Uh, they may be able to tell, but you know, you're on fire. You you've, you've got a fantastic story, and I would never stand in anyone's way of bettering their self that's right. that's the difference between me and some of these other people out there that they can't see the forest for the trees um mm -hmm. and uh again we're going to do it our way and and uh if people don't like it just i guess you can either get on the train or get off of it because here we go right. hey you can cuss on this show all you want richard i, we gotta... I just ain't got to the right moment i guess We'll get it. I called Richard before this and told him if he didn't have a dip in his mouth, he wasn't allowed to come on the show. I was going to have one whether you wanted it or not. So the other night before, I'm going to derail for just a second, but if anybody watched the speech from the banquet the other night, I have to give you a, a POV that was probably one of the highlights of working for Richard Freeman. Erica's talking. She just started talking. She's talking about family and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. You can tell Richard's like blah, blah, whatever, right? He's sitting next to me. She's talking. He pulls it back, just takes the biggest dip, puts it in his lip. And as soon as he says that, Erica starts talking about him. So he's got little trickles of Copenhagen all in that beard on his face. And the camera, awesome. the camera goes to him and he's got black all down here. And he takes his cup, his arms up, and he's like, the fuck? <laughs> and that's what he did for his cameo during Erica's speech. Hey, no, I was nothing. sick of listening to her as everybody else in the place was. It nothing was. spells Richard Freeman <laughs> like a lip full of Copenhagen. But it was the most Richard thing ever. And poor Erica, the the whole place is laughing, and Erica has no idea because all she's doing is reading a teleprompter. And it was just, it was one of my favorite. Richard moments ever, but I digress and I'm going to lead us into what everybody wants us to talk about tonight, Richard. Yeah. It's been all over the comments, the DQ, the thing that happened in Vegas, give us your, the, the article by Bobby Bennett on competition plus was phenomenal. Your quote was just 
the most Richard thing ever. But uh, tell us a little bit of what happened in Vegas with those but DQ runs. I want you to round. I want you to round that into the all of the all of the NHR if you can. I don't know what you can. I mean, you can probably talk about whatever the fuck you want to, but whatever you can talk about. Clay Milliken's DQ, the seventy-four points over yeah, the yeah, all of it over the loose ballast. Matt Hagan and them having to beat on headers, all this stuff that all of a sudden NHRA Tech becomes a thing, but obviously focused around you guys' DQs and them throwing runs out for all this shit. Fire yeah, away! What the hell's going on? Well, uh, you know our DQs were, um, I guess you could say, warranted. Here's my and and this isn't nothing that I haven't said to them. My whole life in racing with NHRA was tech was a big deal. Somehow or another, we've ended up where we self tech. Yeah. So my my whole issue with the whole thing, right, wrong, or indifferent, it was it was it was a safety issue, and it had to do with the with the Leahy. Yeah. And if everybody will remember in Gainesville, Erica's car did not start for first round. Yeah. 100% Leahy issue, okay? We don't know how it happened. We don't know what happened. Went back to the pits and it started right up. After that, there was several other issues that they had. Uh, and NHRA made the rule that you could run a different type switch. You didn't have to run Justin's switch. Well, Jake took that as... Well, that switch can't be wired the way it is in the rule book. So everything worked on the car. Jake could go into it, but it wasn't wired the way they wanted it wired. Best of my understanding. At the end of the day, it could have played a significant role in the championship. Absolutely. When we got to Pomona, the way it laid out, all we needed was seven points to clinch. Okay, if we would have had those low qualifying points, uh, we would have needed one, I think. Yeah. Whatever it was, it doesn't matter. Um, at the end of the day, I believe, Jake believes, my whole group believes that that should have been some something that was tech before the race, told us to fix. If we didn't, we get getting DQ'd. That's no big deal. But it wasn't a performance uh, issue whatever it doesn't matter as far as the top fuel headers and all that i've heard all kinds of stories I, same deal i i don't know i think their measuring device is something that a three-year-old could have built uh just just a just a fucking joke but their sandbox end of the day their rules you either play bomb or you don't it's real simple you either play bomb or you don't. And so you can, we can disagree all we want. We can talk about it. I wouldn't want their job yeah. for nothing. And I'm Especially so I'm not lying. gonna I'm not gonna bad mouth those guys. They're they're all good people. Um I think during COVID, kind of like a hotel. You ever, you go to these hotels today and the some bitches don't want to clean your room. The rate isn't cheaper. But you got to tell them and then hope when you get back at night, when you're wore out, that you got clean towels and a clean sheets, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of that. During COVID, NHRA had to pull the reins back. They did. We just haven't got back to that point. A lot of discussion going, going on about it. Um, uh, I think that's all you can say. I, it, you know, it didn't have a bearing on what happened. Uh, if it would have, we probably be having a different discussion, but we're not. So it don't, it doesn't matter. Your, your voice. And I don't, I think it's getting to be more well known now, but in the last year, 18 months, I feel like you've really, you've been working on this for a decade, but your role in the sport has really grown and really changed. And not only are you operating and owning the biggest team in motorsports history, a successful team, all the things that happen underneath our umbrella, but your voice of what you have through your association with pro and getting to be closer with guys like Chad Head and Antron and Michelle Domagala and all these things that we are doing and building things. 
I was in on that meeting in the crew chief lounge with you and Lonnie. And again, this is nothing on these tech guys personally. It was a great conversation. We love Lonnie, all the stuff, but do you feel like that conversation went the way it did and went differently because of your progression in the sport? Like would five years ago, Richard said the shit that he set up there? Oh, I think so. I, my filter has not been kind of the same, the, the whole deal. I mean, I think or, it's or the lack thereof. Yeah, I, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, but, but I will tell you those guys, they take it pretty well. Uh, again, I wouldn't want their job for nothing. They mm -hmm. got a tough deal. Um, and you know, as far as what we're doing with pro and all that stuff, what I think about this sport is first of all, I think it's the best sport on the planet. Uh, especially when I say sport motorsport, it is something that, you know, I've argued for a lot of time. I'm not a huge fan of TV. I think TV's okay. I think we do need it but I don't think it's the all. I think NASCAR is a TV sport. I think our sport is a live sport. I think there is a lot of, uh, I think besides the drivers, there's just a lot of different talent out there. Uh, I mean, Lyle, look at you. Yes, you are a great driver, but you're also somebody that people look at and they say, look at what this guy's done. Look what he's went through. Uh, we know he's an idiot, but look how he got to where he's at. And, and I think that all those stories, people want to know. Um, yeah. uh, I know I do. Um, well, there has to be some kind of connection, right? Like, and it's got to be ground level, you know? And, yeah. and what I mean by that is <clears throat> to the general drag racing fan, Erica Enders, Doug Coletta, Matt Hagen, and Gage Rare are not ground level people, right? No, I They're agree. not reachable. You know what I mean? Where when in in reality, I know this now, and <clears throat> I didn't before that we're all just stupid motherfuckers that do this shit for fun. But they need they, somebody that they can relate to, you know. And I still try to do my backwoods elite motorsport sponsored beer money Mustang uh, small tire no prep. <laughs> God, uh, stuff that thing is horrible. <laughs> it's absolutely it's fucking horrible. I can't wait to drive that thing right up in your pit one day. God. Oh, uh, it's Fuck, Please don't. <laughs> It'll devalue uh, my shit by a bunch. Uh, you wait. You wait until NHRA Charlotte four wide because we're not racing there. I'm driving that so much right in Erica's pit. Oh no. But um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think that that story surrounding drivers and stuff because there's a lot of these drivers, and I'll say it in the in the top fuel ranks is in the in the nitro ranks that I'm not saying they don't have a story. It's just not told they are professional athletes and that's it, you know? And like, and even Erica's is not told well, I don't think, and I'm not devaluing anything you guys do, but like she came up from the junior drags to ranks. And I know the, the right on track movie told some of that and whatnot, but I still think there's some things about, there's things about a lot of us that people just don't know, but you're right. There are some drivers. And I think more so in the pro modified class than anywhere else that have good stories. Um, we talked about the no prep King stuff earlier and how they needed to shake up and need some, some new faces in there. And I think that the, the growth in the pro mod class, which are a huge part of, of that class coming up, um, you know, there's some new drivers coming in there. And I think that you're going to see an influx of, of story, like storylines and drivers coming into the class and it's starting to become a thing, you know, and I think it's great. I, it's there's drag racing in my opinion is as healthy as it's ever been. Well, in a long time right now. And it took credit for you, um, what's going on at pro, um, you know, and, and while we're going into the pro thing uh, with with all that's going on around the pro stuff, um, I have not been involved in any talks with it at all. I have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. Um, as far as the pro thing is concerned, do you feel as though that this rule stuff that's going on, right, the, the tech department, kind of honing in on some people. Do you feel as though that some teams that are associated with pro and that are going to be associated with pro moving forward are being targeted by the NHRA? You know, I've thought about that. I figured you would ask that question. Honestly, no, I, I really don't think so. Um, you know, here's the deal. And I'll say this, I've said it to NHRA. That what we're doing with pro 
has nothing to do with the NHRA. It's only going to help. And it, it, there are walls that are being taken down between teams, uh, competitors, people that you just don't maybe not like. Uh, I've gained a lot of new friends uh, through the through the pro deal. And I'll be honest with you, it's a lot of work. I mean, we have put a lot of work into this. But if you think it's not going to benefit the NHRA and all of us, you're crazy. And I think they even know that. Do they um, yet? I mean, I think they think I, it, but do they know it? I think they, I think they acknowledge it. Listen, too. guys, think about just let bygones be bygones. Put yourself in their shoes. You're, you're, you're running a business. You've been the only game on the planet and people are going against the grain a little bit. Yeah. You would have a little bit of ass hurt yourself. Okay. Hurt. Now we're not doing it for that. It ain't got nothing to do with that. We want the, the last thing pro wants to be is a sanctioning body or that an enemy that, or, or an enemy, but that's not yeah. what we want. We're, we all have to lock arms and try to make what we're doing better. And if, if that means pro putting on two or three races a year, okay. Yeah. I don't well, I, think it hurts anything. I don't either. And I think, I think a little pressure and I'll call it pressure on the NHRA to do step outside the box and do something different is good. Right. And like, I, don't, I don't think anybody would argue that. I, I don't even know. They may not be able to say it, but I don't even know if they would argue that because right. what if they see something that they can do yep, differently that well, people in the, the, you know, in California, California have said no to, and they thought it was a good idea. They have. We're going to do it. Did you see that that press release came out the other day? And you started this with me and Flo for years now. You've been saying it. And last year or two years ago at the U.S. Nationals, we did the Elite Pit Pass where we had live cameras in the pit. It was a bit of a clusterfuck. It was crazy. We had a live pit reporter. We had every moment on camera. But now next year in the NHRA, they're going to have pit cameras to where the streaming service can go into it. So pressure created results. Yeah. And that's kind of what I'm talking about, right? Yep. That is some of the things that we have to do. And again, they may not say it, but I think they're kind of invited because it can help maybe get some of those barriers tore down that they can't do by themselves. That's the way I look at this. And, and uh, again, I'll say it, you know, there's a lot of people say, oh, yeah, we're, go we're going after NHRA. Hell no. No, we don't, don't want to be a sanctioning body. I want to help them be better. Yep. We can all be better. I can be better. They can be better. Lyle, you can be better. Courtney, we know can be better. Uh, okay, let's not get crazy. Uh, but, sure. but, but that's what it's about. And I will tell you, there are some some guys that Bob Tasca, I swear to you, the first meeting I was in, I said, all right, I can't do this. I'm going to punch him right in the throat. I have come to really like him. He's he not cares. stupid. He's not stupid and he cares about our sport. Yeah. And so sometimes he comes across differently because he's from a different part of the country. Well, but he everything talks a lot he, different than you. He does. Everything he says is correct. And and uh, you know, Antron Brown, Steve Torrance, Jim Head, um, Chad Head, there is just a unbelievable Ron Caps, a lot of people. We don't all agree on everything, but it's pretty cool to see. And I don't know that it's ever been done. I don't think so, where there are pro stock teams. Pro, uh, top fuel teams and nitro funny car teams, and they're all swinging the same way. And it's I think never you're been gonna, done. No, and I think you're going to see some really cool shit come from this. Yeah. And it doesn't have to take away. I think the thing that we get most at Flow with Elite on the social stuff I run it is what are we doing to take away? Like, we cannot beat this horse dead enough that we're not doing anything to take away. Like this is no. not just a PR fluff. This is no. to help the freaking sport. And if y'all don't know this by now, 
with the mountain motor class coming back to life because of Richard. He really helped with the pro mod deal. Like having nine cars, you freaking sponsored a top fuel car last weekend that blew up. That we're going to talk about here in a second. It did. Love that. What'd, you, what'd you tell him? Nice job, Spencer. God he said, damn. if you're going to blow the fuck up, don't fucking kill yeah, my quit. quit. <laughs> that poor bastard, he was on fire too. God. He was. I, I ain't never... I ain't never seen the flames on the top fuel car wrapped back around and in the canopy going down the racetrack. But Dude, Spencer, you know, I you to, he got out. He goes, yeah, I was warm. I got my belts. I'm like, yeah. The fuck? yeah. Courtney, you know, you said something all ago about the largest team. You know, I want to make something clear. First of all, I don't own all that shit. So I do. My, You're right. My cars are Erica's, TJ's, Jags, and, uh, Jerry Don's Stanfield's cars owned by Joe Janik. The Quadras own all their own equipment. What we do is offer a service to allow people to work at their job on Monday, come race on, on Sunday. Right. And if we don't do that, there is no class. I've heard it two or three times this year. Uh, I believe Matt Hartford even said it. You know, he's real proud of his independent team. Well, he was a part of our program at one time. The yeah. problem is he chooses to be a single team. Okay? Uh, you know, it was just him and just him and Greg are independent teams. Well, goddamn, I'd hate to be one of their other customers. Um, you know, to me, it just feels like a kick right in the nuts. Um, we don't operate that way. So, um, at the end of the day, that's what we do. And again, the results speak for themselves. End of story. What's I have I have two questions left. I don't know what you have, Lyle, but we're gonna try and keep this at 30 minutes. I have two questions left. One question that I've been getting a lot in the you know basic elite motorsports inbox and just personally is that deal with Spencer, people don't know the inside to that. He's a customer of yours. He's a friend of yours. Some things logistically worked out to make that happen. You got to throw your name on the side of a top fuel car. But what you've come a long way in the last 10 years with Erica as your flagship and what we've we've built with all the people that are there. What uh, What's the next five years hold for Richard Freeman? How far are you trying to go here? I, I would tell you that I'd love to have a fuel team. Uh whether it's a whether it's a nitro funny car or a top fuel team um wouldn't matter to me uh got a lot of friends over there with the torrances and you know if the deal was right and we had the right backing uh we'd definitely take that on but we have some exciting news coming hopefully the week of pri uh our team has gotten much stronger and it's going to be super exciting uh uh Got got a lot of things that we, we we're going to announce um, and uh, some extensions uh, that are, you know, have, that are going to change uh, the projection of everything we do. So uh, we're excited about that. Everybody stay tuned. It's coming. Um, but uh, it's uh, we're going to have a lineup that's going to be uh, pretty tough to beat, I would say. Got that I, already. <laughs> he does. And I know I know you've always seen this. And I've been I've been really blessed to be um, a fly on the wall and occasionally get to fly in the room. But ten years ago, I mean, you built it. If you build it, they will come. Is this where you wanted to be? All your involvement in it? Because I mean, we get things like the boss man's coming on, Richard Freeman for president, and you went through this kind of like he's a little too rough for the curve and all the things. And now everybody's like obsessed with Richard Freeman. Did you did you mean well, to put yourself in this spot? I don't know about obsessed, but they fucking again, love you, man. Everybody I'm including sitting me, here, I'm, I'm not sitting here, obsessed. I'm with sitting Richard here Freeman. at my ranch, deer hunting, with the same guys I started with. Grassroots, comp eliminator, uh, stock, super stock. They're some of my best friends. Um, at, at the end of the day, that's who we are, and I. I uh, Ten years ago, Courtney, you asked a question. I think it's surpassed. Um, I don't think he, Erica or I thought that we would be here, uh, six-time world champion. And I think she would even tell you, you know, uh, a year or two ago, she was contemplating uh, uh, retiring. But there is a 
and I'm not speaking for her, but I can tell you for me, there is a new burn in our gut uh, to topple what's out there in front of us. She is the winningest female in motorsports history. We're going to try to keep that tally going. Um, I, I, I can't, I couldn't have dreamed of doing what I do and what I get to do. And that's what I tell, that's what I tell my guys all the time. Courtney's heard quote. this. Yep. Hey, this is what we get to do for what we do. And at the end of the day, we come home, we go to work. I mean, I was working, I was just on the phone with Marty Robertson, who is buying another truck and trailer. He's getting ready uh, for whatever he's doing. We got a on just an unbelievable uh, customer base, family base, team base. I can't say enough about my guys and, and what they do. Them guys are at the shop right now working on shit. Uh, it's, it's just unbelievable. So, uh, and, I mean, God bless you get to work with me every day. Like, mm, fuck. yeah, it's just fantastic. It's a dream. Yeah. Dream come true. Hey, yeah, I didn't man. know when I hired Erica, I got a whole onslaught of motherfuckers that I had to take. Okay. To take on. No, there's Count one, you. there's one, but now, you yeah. know, in our conversation <laughs> the other day, it's worth it. Is it not? Oh, Erica doesn't it's, function without me. It, well, she can't function without either one of us. Yeah, that's true. We no, have a trial. That's some she, she will be late to her funeral. But it's unbelievable. I was told to make you repeat yourself. What did you say after she beat Greg Anderson? And I think the it was the baddest Alex. bitch on the planet. We're making shirts. Here's the deal. I've got again got an unbelievable lineup of drivers. Every one of them, Aaron Stanfield, TJ Coughlin, Jeg Coughlin, all of them will tell you probably the best that ever stepped foot in a pro stock car. I believe it. Ten years ago, I didn't know that some bitch was crazy. Oh, yeah. But when the ball started dropping and she started figuring out how to win, um, you know, think about this. When she come to me, I believe she had only won, what was it, six times? Is that right, Courtney, in pro stock? Whatever it was. So six or seven, yeah. I mean, we've won over 40, 40 races. races in 10 years, six world championships. That's uh, counting the two Dodge years where you didn't win a fucking round. Well, and, and the Dodge deal set us back. I mean, we were horrible. If there would have been more than 16 cars, we'd have never qualified. We no. Absolutely horrendous. And, and I say that all the time. So, you know, but a, a learning deal, nothing against Mopar. Those people were fantastic to work yeah, with. Yeah, they supported well. Uh, I, I'm not going to blame it all on them. We just couldn't get it done. And, uh, you know, we, we made the wrong choice going into fuel injection and blah, blah, blah. But, but at the end of the day, it taught us about who we were. And uh, it, it, it is what it is. Here we are. Well, it's been, it's, I told you this emotionally the other night at the banquet, but it has truly been one of the coolest rides ever. I get a lot of shit for coattail, this and that, but you, me, Erica, the people that matter, we've all made this happen. And I am so thankful that you've given me a front seat to this ride. And, and these are some of the coolest memories and the Freemans are family to me now. Absolutely. And you guys too, both you and Lyle. I mean, Lyle knows that him and his dad and his Stepmom, they're just fantastic people. And, the most and, whimsical uh, woman in America. What? The, the woman in white. She, the, the Southern woman in white. She's the most oh, yeah. whimsical woman ever. Well, ask Richard the question you want to ask. Uh, I've been dying. Go. Richard, and I, I feel like I know what he's going to I think he would lie just to fucking Just say it, ask it, you bearded fuck. Do you like fajitas? Do I like Fuck, yes, I like fajitas. You don't like them? He thinks no. they smoke too much when you go to a mexican restaurant the food needs to be finished fucking cooking when it leaves the door of that kitchen i don't want to cook the shit in front of me bring it out on a plate cook that steaming bullshit they do on where, a are, you from? Bullshit. where are you from not the south god's where? country north carolina no. god's country no god's country's right here where i'm sitting oh, that now you've got it now you've got it but oh, fajitas you don't like fajitas that's about no. as un-american what do you what do you eat out there? Hog jowl? What the eat, fuck is wrong with we you? Eat fucking cheeseburgers, hot dogs, barbecue. What do you mean fajitas are the most American? That shit comes from Mexico, Richard. No, 
Let me tell you something. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Richard, tell him. Say you don't. Yes, know. you don't know, Law. What we do why, know is why are they only opera. served? Why are they only served at a Mexican restaurant, then? Huh? Well, shit. Brian Lane's cooked them for us at Richard's house. Yeah, we eat them all the time. You can't go to Outback and get fajitas. Why? Why can't you go because to the grill down the road? All they can do is cook a blooming onion. Why can't they you go down the road to your local grill? Why can't you go to KFC, Bojangles, Hardee's, fucking, why can't you just go anywhere and get well, paid? because Bojangles cook American, fucking chicken. And they suck. They are American. No, they don't. Richard, well, don't eat is, them. How about that? I don't. don't eat this them. This is just I loud. Don't. And if loud. we ever... <laughs> If we ever go to a Mexican restaurant together and you order fajitas, I'm going to grab them off the table and throw them in the trash. <laughs> You're an idiot. That's what I'm ordering, I can tell you, because that's right. all I eat. Well, you heard it here you first. Look, you look like it. Richard yeah. Freeman loves fajitas. Courtney wins yet again. Yeah. Yeah, Lyle. Right. You don't know. Did you kill um, anything I, today? I killed a big bastard two days ago. No, you My good, I did, too. Big Why didn't you send me a send picture? Me a picture of it. I'll send you a picture. Here don't, don't let him do it right now and kill the broadcast. Yeah. It's no, good. you text me because when you, you, I'm pissed. You didn't send a picture, you dick. Listen, I've been busy. I don't care. Yeah. Busy. Oh, before we let him go, let me tell you what it's like to work for Richard Freeman. 742 phone rings. Hello? Get the fuck out of bed. <laughs> All right, go back to bed. So you get to bed, you go take your old ass to bed, eat your fajitas, make Brian cook you some dessert. We had tamales tonight. I guess you don't like them either. My well, tamales are fine. <laughs> it's so just, a, it, it, it's at a Mexican restaurant when they bring the skillet and it's still steaming. That's what bothers me. Okay, Lyle. Because you go home smelling like a Mexican's ass. Yeah. Well, he don't have no hair. He don't care. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, he does. Right here. No. Yeah, whatever that twisty shit is you got going on down look, there. Look how long this thing's getting. It's that unbelievable. Shit. So it's gross. Shitty. Get it out I of love it. All right. You're, you're gone. We love you. Thank you for All coming right. on. All right, Rich. Richard. See you, guys. See, See ya. ya. Bye. Eat shit. Have you ever met a human being more genuine in your life? No. Like, he'll tell you that you're the dumbest motherfucker he's ever met. And he means it. He does mean it. He's told me that five times when I told you beginning of the broadcast. I, I got my job back at Elite Motorsports for next year. How many times? This is this has got to be the seventh rehire. I've been fired and hired a thousand times. Um, only one time was I not allowed in the pit. But this is going to be a weird transition, but we got to do it because I want Friendsgiving to work. Oh, we have to call the most resort winner before we do anything else. Before Victor? Can we bring him on while we do it? I mean, we can. I mean, if you want to do it, do it. Victor, Victor, are you good in the green room for five minutes? He's good. Text me if you're not. Go ahead and do it. He just sent that? Yeah. He stole my first deer from me. I shot my first deer that I ever shot at dusk, and we went to look for him, and the sun went down before we got across the river, and he wouldn't let me go look across the river. So I never got my first deer I ever shot. Richard Freeman. You should have shot it better than it had dropped where it stood. Whatever. That's what he said, too. Anyway. Right. We're calling the Motion Race Works Pay Your Tab winner right, right now. Here we go. What's his name? Gregory. Oh, he did send us that pic, didn't he? Erica sent it too. Shh. Shh. What if he doesn't answer? Off TV, motherfucker. Well, it's because it's gosh damn nine o'clock. You just leave a message. Maybe he'll call back while we're talking to Victor. Doug's gotten first time answers like every time. Please leave your message for new message. Did you just drop your phone? No, I didn't want to say his number. I Hello, Gregory. This is Lyle Barnett live on the Shake and Bake Show. You need to call me back. Thanks, bye. Uh -huh. Maybe I'll call back. All right. Well, without further ado, if you guys have more questions, Richard related, go ahead and throw them in the chat. We're going to do a big Q and A at the end of this deal. Um, this may be our longest show ever. Jake Harrison just texted me, and he does not text. You will be proud of me. I actually watched the show tonight. Wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. All right. Let's uh let's switch gears very quickly and let's talk some promo action with Victor Alvarez. What's up? What's Vic? up? What's going on? <laughs> How's it going? It's a little scary for me because we have no control over the screen. And I was like, God dang, I hope he's still there when I say his name. <laughs> <laughs> At any minute, the winner of the motion raceworks deal could call me back. We may just have to Yeah, that'll well. be cool. Yeah. But yeah, for yeah. now, anyway. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Victor Alvarez, owner and operator of Bradenton Motorsports Park, quite possibly the finest racetrack on planet Earth. Um, the only place to race this time of year, obviously. And Victor just capitalizes on that every year. Three of the best pro mod races um, that I've ever attended. Uh, the Snowbirds. I don't know, Victor. I know they're all special. Uh, they all have their place in their time, but... In your opinion, do you rank them one over the other? All right, let's, with the exception of the World Series, with the exception of the World Series, because it's kind of its own deal, does the, do the Snowbirds set the tone, or does this finish the year, or does it start your year? How do you rank them? So, I mean, Snowbirds is, like, personal favorite for me, but probably because that was the, fir that was the first time I ever watched a pro mod leave the starting line was I went to the Snowbirds in like 2015 and uh, that was before I owned the track and Alan's like you got to come the old owner got to check it out and I went and stood up on the starting line and I watched I think I, it was actually Stevie it was Stevie man I forget who he ran but anyways and I was of course in love was. I was hooked I was did hooked. you know did you know then you would own Bradenton Motorsports Park no 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 I had no idea you hadn't even dreamt I, it up yet no I never dreamt it up Okay, we got we got to start from the front. <laughs> I never I never got to dream that up. But anyways, I think Snowbirds ends the year with a bang. And it used to be that US Street kind of set the tone for the year. And I would say it still does for the radial stuff, but for Pro Mod, I think World Series of Pro Mod really sets the tone for the year. It tells you it kind of just shows gives you a, an inside look at like what's going to happen this year. New cars, who's doing what, who's who's running hard early in the year, what combinations are doing what. It's, uh, it's a really cool race. So you consider, and I, I how, the, how the calendar works, I'm not an idiot. I know we're at the end of the year, but you consider Snowbirds the closing out of the season and U.S. Street the start. I do. And okay. I'll tell you why. Because, like, if you go to the Snowbirds, you'll see, like, a team, and they'll have one car, like their pro mod, and then they'll come to U.S. Street with a new car for the new year. It's the craziest thing, but it's just how it works. Yeah, and then somebody else is driving that car that they used to drive right down the street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's coming out of the back of somebody else's hauler. Yeah, yeah. Well, but it, being I, mean, that you... I feel like it's the, it's the beginning of the year, at least in my opinion. See, I get excited because I live in this like weird tunnel vision of NHRA life, and my my life at Flow is helping me to not be so this away. But once the banquet happens, anything to me that happens after the banquet is like 2024, which I know makes no sense. Like, I don't even want to hear it. I know I'm stupid. It makes no sense. But this this snowbird thing as a fan to me before I worked it was always kind of like the precursor, like almost first time you're getting your feet wet again. And I know there's going to be new things that are happening, new teams. But I mean, everybody's already finished everything. PDRA finishes earlier than NHRA. NHRA Pro Mod finished months ago. And I'm looking at this entry list from literally, I'm just reading first to last, from Spencer Hyde to Mark Mickey. People want to come to this race, whether that's to close yeah. out or start. But I truly believe they're starting. Well, and I also think that people, like what's really cool, besides the fact that the weather's great, the track is great, the vibe that Bradenton has is next level. Besides all that, I think it's just a really cool opportunity for everyone because there's nothing else going on. So the PDRA guys get to race. The NHRA people, the Northeast Pro Mod people, the NMCA people, the Midwest people, everybody's here. So, like, people that you don't normally get to race, you, you may get to line up with with this one. I mean, I'm yeah, I'm looking at this. Lyle, are you on this list that he sent me? You are. Spencer Hyde, Eric Brown. Lyle, Lyle was one of the first. What is it? Oh, this is – um. My alarms were set on my phone, <laughs> and I had everything ready to rip. It's crazy that a Pro Mod race – sells out the entry sell out that fast oh it's unbelievable That's i remember what, i think it's kind of the beginning like i really maybe, do. Maybe. i know things change but this is like step one to what's coming i remember my first snowbirds when i took over in 2018 we had like 
16 or 17 pro mods and i was like i was heartbroken i was like there's no way these are the coolest cars on earth like what the hell is going on this will never happen again and i, I looked the other day i think we paid ten thousand bucks to win or something like that and now here we are we pay over 50 grand just to the winner i think the runner-up gets 10 grand and we we have 52 cars fight there i was just gonna say i just counted 50 Two. So I want to talk about, you just said you never even dreamt it up, like where you're at now and you're looking back <laughs> to where you were a couple of years ago, like how the hell did this happen? Well, and like, and I want to know, like, I don't know, being that you never dreamt this up and now you're here, like, where did Victor Alvarez come from? Like, where did, where did your involvement in motorsports, the performance aftermarket, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, where did it come from? So growing up, my dad had a Toyota Supra. And I have a shop in Duction Performance. That's like my day job. And we work on Supras. And that's all my dad and my uncle swam. So I thought that Toyota Supras and import cars were like the coolest thing ever. I grew up in that. Fast and Furious. Like the, the whole nine. Um, 2007, I went to my first TX2K in Texas. And it was awesome. I was hooked. And then 2013, I got the idea. I was like, we need to do something similar in Florida. And I called uh, Peter Block that does TX2K and we talked and he gave me the blessing to use the name and we started FL2K. And that was my first time doing an event. And I think we planned the first one in like two months. So October 2013, I did my first event. I had just met all the staff at Bradenton and I had been racing there for a while, but like just started meeting like the owner and so on. And... I think 2017, he jokingly said, like, you know, this is going to be your track one day. And I didn't even, I was like, he's just messing with me. And then uh, April 2018, it happened. It was that quick from, from was, fuck you to that quick. So, so <laughs> I think the 2016 or 2017, nah, 2016 probably, 2016 or 17, the Snowbirds, um, Alan that used to own the track had a heart attack on the starting line and mild heart attack. He had to leave in an ambulance, whatever, but he was okay. So Monday of the, after the event, I call him, I'm like, you know, how was the event? Blah, blah, blah. And he goes, Oh, it was good. I'm in the hospital now about to check out. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I had a heart attack. So then the, I, we go to lunch that week and we're talking and he's like, yeah, he's like, you know, my wife asked me like, what do I do with this racetrack? God forbid something happens to you. And he's like, you call Victor, you have Dave call Victor, he's the guy, he's the next guy, whatever. And he's telling me this and I'm just like, I'm in shock. I'm like, cause like the dream to me was to have a performance shop and to go racing. Owning a track was not even like, obviously now that's, that's the real dream. And it's, I mean, it still is, but I was blown away. I was, I mean, I'm still, when I talk about it, I get goosebumps. Like it was insane. And yeah, we just probably a year later he called me. He goes, "I decided I want to, uh, I want to be here to watch you do this. I don't want to wait till I'm gone, and you're the guy for the job. So let's make it happen." Well, I, I personally, you know, I've I've came there, I've been there before you, I've been there with you, you know, and and still continue to come and support anything. I try to anything that you guys can, even though it's a long ways from home, but. You know, over the years as I've came there, especially since you've been involved, the constant uh, in your your personal involvement, the constant progression there, the constant efforts to make the track a better racetrack. Right. Like, and I think there's some notes to be taken and I get it across the country. <clears throat> tracks are hurting, you know, for money. And, and I know that it's, you know, uh, every dollar brought in is another dollar spent going out to to make something better somewhere along the way. But in, you know, in the tracks that I'm personally, I, I say involved with, it's tracks I frequent multiple times a year. You know, you guys at Bradenton, Tyler Cross, no, at Virginia Motorsports Park. Yep. Um, Jeff Miles and the crew at Darlington. You know, there are a select yeah. few tracks on my side, right? Yeah, at the Baders and whatnot that, that I constantly see you guys trying to raise the bar and trying to do something to make your facility better. You know, and you guys, in my opinion, you know, in any other owner would see what's going on outside of the fences there at Bradenton, right? The constant development, the housing developments moving in on you, you would, you would just say, I'm not spending any more money, right? It, 
you've got what you've got at some point. They're going to try to run us out of here, but that's not the approach you take. And I commend you and your staff there and the aforementioned tracks for your just constant efforts to make it better, you know, and like you guys have paved since I've been there. Um, They're paving and, more right now. Right. You know, and I was just there a few, a few months ago. Right. You know, and it's, and man, it's just cool. I, I love coming there, especially this time of year, right? Like it's cold up here. It's raining today. We're going to come to Florida and wear shorts and t-shirts and, and it's going to be awesome, but there, it's more to it than that. You guys are my friends and, and the track is just an awesome place to race. And there's a reason West Buck and the pro series um, and, and people like that choose you guys. And it's because of the efforts you guys have put in and it's just fucking awesome, man. You guys have done a great job. Did you have a question in that fucking spiel? No, he was just saying how great I am. Don't be a hater. Listen, yeah, we, haven't right. fought, we haven't fought the whole episode. Usually it's like him and I and Stevie. I just had to bring it back. Yeah, well, <laughs> you just keep your ass in Texas. But was there a question in that spiel? No, I was just giving him props, Courtney. <laughs> Well, the thing about drag racing in general, and I think this goes for like the teams as well, it's one of those things that you cannot treat like a business. You have to do this. This is a passion project. Like you have to be involved. You have to love it. And if you don't, you will not survive. Like you will not survive this industry if you get into it to make money. It's just what it is. Now, what's crazy is if you get into it with a lot of love and a lot of passion for the sport, and you spend a ton of money on the sport, you make money. Yeah. If you look at the numbers and you go crazy and you're like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that, oh, this doesn't make sense. It just doesn't work. But if you invest everything you got into it from like your heart, the people will support you because people love this sport. Yeah. I know, I know you mean that. And I know you on a personal level and have been on the other sides of meetings for all of this, but I want to kind of transition that into when you have a big race like World Series of Pro Mod, or you have a big race like the Pro Race, your races are big, just as big, all the things, but they're yours. And you get to do with what you want as it is. When you are the host to these things and they come in and say, we want to move the scoreboards. We want to put concrete here. We want to do it this way. Why are you so open to that? I mean, I'm open to anything really to do. Like, if I truly believe that the person that I'm working with or the group that I'm working with has the same goals as I had and the same vision, I'm down to do whatever. Um, like if you pay attention, we don't do events with many people at all. Like when I bought the track, we used to do tons of events where it was like track rentals and this, that, and the other. And I stopped doing all that because if you can't match my energy and we're not going to like do an event and both like go hard and like make sure it's a banger, we're not going to do it. I'll use that date and do my own thing or work with somebody you know, somebody else and make it even better. So if I, you know, if I choose to work with a group, it's because I feel that we share that energy and we go hard in the paint. We just, we make it happen. That's it. What are you expecting with this pro race? Oh man. I know that's really broad, but I, and it wasn't even on my list. I don't know how to answer that either. I don't, I don't, I really don't, I don't know how to answer that. I'm expecting that. They're gonna. They're not gonna want to build houses next to us for anymore. That's kind of my motive here. Hey, like, hey, might not be a bad be thing. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Um, Is this an exclamation point of like where you're almost like kind of pulling your pants down and being like, "I'm the boss here. Like, this is I'm bringing the big boys. You don't want to do this here." Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, yes. Like that's the that's the message that we're trying to send, right? Like myself and the Freedom Factory. Garrett as well like we're not slowing down we're, we're we're ramping up and we're packing those places like just this Saturday we had like we both that had an event at the same time fucking insane both facilities packed and like that's what we're going to continue to do and just show and like I just want you know what what whatever let's say that we only got 10 years left or whatever it may be right and we have to go build another facility or whatever the case like I want to go out with a bank and I want to I want to I don't want to make their lives easy. I want them to have to think about every single oh, house that, that they think they're going to build. Yeah. So, screw so it. you've you've had heavy involvement in the import world. I know. Yeah. You know, like and and even and I'm I'm not saying I've noticed in a bad way, but even when we've been down there racing pro mods, I've I've been there with you when you've had your front wheel drive stuff going on, and that seems to be kind of where your passion was, and that's okay. But here recently, here recently, <laughs> you got a little taste. 
uh, some rear wheel drive, just raw dog American horsepower in Martin Mickey's twin supercharged eight yeah. mile pro mod. And it, it, I think it, I think it has changed my man. <laughs> Talk about so, it a little bit. Yeah. Your social so posts totally outed you. Yeah. I, that was like the best and worst thing that's ever happened. <laughs> because like, yeah. obviously I've always been a huge fan of pro mod. That's why like I, like that was the driving force of me kind of rebuilding BMP. It was pro mod. It was pro mod and then FL two K. And we do FL two K once a year. We do pro mod stuff twice a year now, three times a year. Um, I've always been blown away by those cars, the drivers, the crews, the teams, how hard they work. Like just the whole thing. I've always been just blown away by pro mod and thought it's like, to me, it's 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 the big leagues. It's like it's the coolest thing you can do in door car racing. Just period end of discussion that's it um that's my opinion that's how i've always felt but anyhow i've wanted to get behind the wheel of one of those things since the first time i stood on the starting line and i've always had like a small not fear but like hesitation and uh, i jokingly said to mark that i wanted to do it and he texted me he, he tested one day and he's like yeah we're gonna throw you in there one day so he tested on like monday and then monday night he texted me he goes we got the car figured out so tomorrow bring your suit and bring your balls let's go <laughs> And Holy! Fuck. That was the first time I had done a burnout in a pro mod. First time I had like. Were you just like, first time I sat in a pro mod? Uh, I was insane. At the end of the track, I, I I was just like I didn't say anything. I was just smiling ear to ear. It was insane. But what a good car! So like oh. when you stand on the starting line, at least yeah. me and like I'm sure Tyler's like this, and there's other people that are like this. When I stand on the starting line, I pay attention to everything. Like I know who likes to play games, how they stage their car what car stage, what way. I know all of it. Like I pay attention to all of it. And that car has always just looked really smooth and really good. That car just like goes straight down the track. And I'm like, I want to drive that one. And I'm glad I chose that one because some of these other cars are kind of rowdy. How fast did you go? Can you say? Yeah. So again, I think I put it on a pedestal. Like I was like terrified. I was like, all right, if I could do a good burnout, stage the car and do like a 60 foot run today, I'll be happy. So first run, I did a burnout. Come on. It was easiest, easiest, like it was just, it was simple. Did a burnout. And that car just, again, that car is really dialed in and set up really well. Mm -hmm. Did a burnout, staged the car, had one little like, which it was, I noticed it, but nobody else did. I had a little brain fart on the staging. Let go of the button, went 970 to the 60 foot, which my best 60 foot previous to that is probably like a 108 60 foot. Yeah, that's a big Small tire car. Yeah, so let go of the button. Got to, you know, cut it off at the sixty foot. Came back and he's like, you know, how was it? And I was like, felt oh, amazing because it's it's so fast, but it's so smooth. It's actually not as crazy as people think it is. Like it just it just happens. And like you're See, just I kind of along it for the being ride. Violent pro mod is oh, violent to me. I, I think because it's a turbo car, maybe that it wasn't. Yeah. It was really smooth. I'm uh-huh. sure if it was like a screw blower car, I probably would have like shit my pants or something. But <laughs> it was great. So we came back around and Mark's like, all right, let's do the same thing again and just run it out a little bit past the 330. So I did that and I cut it off like 400 feet or something. I went 384 at 160 something, God, which is my PB in the eighth. Yeah. So is, is there a future where your name's on this list I'm staring at? Oh, I mean, thousand percent. Not a hundred, but a thousand? The only reason that it's not happening like now. right away, right now is because of time. Um, it's a big commitment and I know how I am. Like, I'm like Lyle, I'm going to dedicate a year to it and I'm going to try to win a points championship, whether it's PDRA, NHRA, whatever it is. And I'm going to not miss a single race. No, y'all need to do calm down and just send it. Just send it. <laughs> calm down. No, I really, I like really, I want, I like, it might be 2025. I was going to say, spend, it, next year, spend next year making some runs, right? Because what you don't want to do as somebody, somebody like, I don't know, some, just let's throw out a random name. Who's a good guy friend you got in Texas, Courtney? Hit it. Like a regular friend? Jesus Christ. Jim Bob. Jim Bob Jim buys a pro mod and he shows up at the Dion. U.S. Street Nationals and Dion shows up at the U.S. Nationals, doesn't run too well, eh, is what it is. Victor goes out and buys a pro mod, somebody, a prominent name. Like, I agree. You want to spend some time get comfortable in a car, find your team, get the groove going, show up next year at the Snowbirds. 
If I can't win, I won't, I, I won't even, I, I can't do it. I'm like, with it you. My dad, like my dad raised us with the phrase, if you cannot win, don't play. Yeah. No. I have zero interest in going to a race and making laps. Yeah, you don't, like, you don't just want your name on the list. Hell no. You want to be a contender. Yeah. Hell no. I want to go and I want to win. Well, listen, you heard it here on the Shake and Bake first. Victor Alvarez, 2025. How do you, so actually, let's ask Lyle. Lyle, how do people feel? Let's say you came to the Snowbirds and my name wasn't on the list, and I send your ass packing first round. How honored. do you feel when the, the owner and the promoter sends you home? Fucking honored. Honored, honored, but I'm probably going to pull the handle on my, on, on, on my shitter tank on my motorhome as I pull out the gate. Well, I did ask you that at FL2K in our interview, yeah. like – when you're Victor, you wear a lot of hats. You're Victor track owner. You're Victor promoter. You're Victor driver. Like, do they treat you different when you're Victor I don't, driver? I don't think they do. But, I mean, I did get some comments. Like, I won the reunion in my front-wheel drive car. And, like, the truth is I don't race nearly as much as I want to because I'm so involved in the events. And, like, I take the event seriously. And it's hard for me because I put the event first. So, for me to go somewhere or to even it would be easier to go somewhere, but for me to have an event at my track and manage the event, put the racers first and race is extremely difficult, which is why I don't do it often. Um, but anyways, I won the reunion at my track in April. And there were a couple comments about that. I shouldn't be able to win, but I'm like, I went through tech actually. And if anything, John Sears and those guys, they gave me a hard time. <laughs> they gave me more of a hard time than I saw them give anyone else. Like, yeah, you can't. I didn't do, do it. anything yeah. special. I actually had a terrible like my car ran like shit. I just got lucky and won. Like it's just you know, which sometimes that happens. Yeah, same, whatever. Same but I won, with, and and some people made with, some comments. Something same thing with Garrett winning. You know, uh, a race or two over there. Uh, oh, Garrett, uh, Garrett has no shame. And he don't, give a shit. <laughs> he don't, that don't, fuck. don't care. Like yeah. he puts on a race, and he'll even. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. He does not jimmy the rules, but if he could, he'd give himself a little bit of advantage. He does not want to lose. <laughs> He, he doesn't want to lose any less than anybody else, you know. Yeah. Like, no, I'm like, I'm just, I'm an extremely competitive person. I think that that shows in everything that I do. Um, well, all, all I'm gonna say is, when you show up, just remember that Jr. Gray has struggled to make his house payment because of me for about two years in a row. <laughs> so if you want to gamble some of that, Loud. Then, we, then we can do it. But don't make me if dump I, my shit. If, don't I, go, if, 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 if I go pro mod racing and we meet up, it may be a terrible thing. Oh, I can't because fucking I'm pay. with you. I'll, we will gamble. We will talk shit. It'll be. It'll be. Insane. I hope they let me. If Listen. y'all ever are fit, are head to head, and I'm at the racetrack, and I don't get to press the button on the start, I'm gonna be fucking. <laughs> Listen, all, all I'm gonna tell you is, you keep having kids. When I go out there and fan you, your too, little, bitch. And, and, and fan <laughs> little honey, don't have your wife calling me looking for the huggies, dog. I'll tell her that it's sitting right here in this fan of cash. His wife's fine. She wants him to win. Come on, just like yours. Yeah, you, you, you and Stevie ain't safe if I get in the car. Just so we're on the same page. You guys are my boys. But you guys ain't safe if I get in the car. Just so we're on the same page. Well, oh, this is recorded. We got it. We do. <laughs> so I want to the re we derailed slightly because that's what we do yeah. on the shake and bake. But Fuck it. this was intended. Yeah, and, and Dad's not here to yell at us, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> the snowbirds this weekend we came on to promote this yeah. i want to promote it it's a freaking fantastic race like i said whether you think you're starting your season or ending your season however it may be it is the only freaking thing going on right now and we need that like we it's been two weeks without drag racing and we're all dying so if you are victor today just relishing in this week that is yet to come because i'm sure thanksgiving you don't really think about all the thanksgiving stuff you're thinking about snowbirds and everything yeah. coming to fruition Two questions. One, what's keeping you up at night in preparing for the snowbirds? Honestly, nothing really keeps me up because my I have like the best crew in the freaking world. You do. They do whatever it takes from like the track prep to the gate staff. They do. Whatever it takes. So like the little things that I have to do are probably the only things I worry about. I don't really worry about anything that my staff has to do because I, I have a lot going on. I don't I wouldn't say that I procrastinate, but I'm not really worried. This time I, I've got everything dialed in. We're a well-oiled machine. We just do this so often. Like we just got out of FL2K and like there's so many things Great, that go right. into an event like that. Like I'm talking t-shirts, stickers, parking, tech, rules, You like just so many things. Sponsors, you have to make sponsors happy. Vendors, you got to make them happy. 
um, you know, promoting it. But I think we got a good recipe. So we'll see you next week. I don't know. I think we have a good recipe. You do. I'm looking at the names here. Spencer Hyde, Derek Brown. I mean, Derek Ward, Melanie Salemi, all of the people, Kevin Ribbenbark, Lyle Barnett, Stevie Fast Jackson, Kurt Stedding. Like, do you have any kind of gut feeling of is this going to be somebody who's well known or is this going to be like a World Series of Promod last year where somebody just kind of comes in? That's, I think that's what we, I like so much is like, so, you know, you go to PDRA, they have Pro Boost and Pro Nitrous. You come here, it's everybody's just, it's a big melting pot. I love We've had it. Jim, Hall, Jim Halsey won the Snowbirds last year. Yep. The, the, I think he was the only nitrous car after the first round. Actually, I think he was the only nitrous car that qualified and he won. Really? Um, yeah, like anything can happen at the Snowbirds cuz also the 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 weather plays a, a, fa- a role. Um the track is tighter than what a lot of people are used to because we do radial stuff, so you got to be on point there. The tuners play a, a huge role in that. Um and I mean, when there's $52,000 to win and like I mean, just that's what you're going to – that's first place. Like, the payouts are strong. Not everybody ha- does well under the pressure. I, I don't get it. Personally, mm-hmm. I don't, like, understand that, but some people just don't. And, I, you know, I think that it's – the Snowbirds, the U.S. Street Nationals, and the World Series of Pro Mod especially, they're a big enough deal now that I don't – and I'm not taking anything away from Spencer Hyde. Like, the dude's a legend. He's a great driver. He was just yeah. Kind of what he did last year literally just solidified him in like the history books forever, forever. Uh, but, yeah, like he, was, he is that dude is a badass. But he was a, a little bit unsung, you know. I feel like yeah. in Canada and what he did up there, he just didn't really know much about him. Um, but you're correct. He is written in the history books forever. But I, I feel like it, it's a big enough race now, and there's enough pressure. It's going to take somebody with some stature, right? Like it's going to take a big team. I, I just don't think, I think we're to the point now that these races are big enough. I don't agree. I don't agree that, either. That it's going to, it's going to be somebody yeah. who's either one, won it before or a pro modified name that, you know, in, in my, opinion. no, here's, here's why I don't agree. Um, there's 52 <clears throat> names on that list and similar to world series of pro mod, like again, nothing against Spencer. Most people would not have picked Spencer as their like top five to win. Okay. Except the girl live on Flow Racing did for 40 yep, bucks. Yep, yep. But anyways, there's 52. Anything can happen. You know that better than 100%. anyone. 100%. And I've seen it many a times. I don't know if it's just like crazy Bradenton thing or whatever. A lot of the big dogs go home first round. It always happens that way. And I like it because it just makes things more interesting. But I don't know. I think yeah, this ain't no that, Vegas NHRA where yeah. things happen the way they're supposed to happen. This is where all right, but out. I can't yeah. recount. But who won the U.S. Streets this year? Ken? U.S. Street was uh, who won U.S. Street? I was just looking at that. I don't know. I'll look it up. I think actually, did Jim? Did, no, did Jim this. Halsey win? I w- no, no. Ken Cortuccio is his first. Oh, uh, it was Ken Cortuccio because I drove Ken it back Cortuccio. with him. Yep. Yep. Yes. yes. Yep. So and, Ken won and U.S. Street. And you Halsey won piece. Snowbirds. Spencer Hyde won uh, World Series of Pro Mod. Year before that, um, Melanie won Snowbirds, and I think U.S. Street we had to call it the year before that. You did, yeah. I was yeah, there. 20, that yeah, was yeah, yeah, we did. Um, and that's what I'm saying. You know, like there, you've got three out of four. I feel like. Yep. Yeah, but who, who yeah, but, so wasn't that Ken's first pro mod win? I was gonna so say like, as much as his Burnett. name is yeah, his name is you know, everybody knows Ken because he's a bad what? dude and he's always racing. But that was he his first time winning a pro mod event. And I said black horse and he won. He did. He did. I don't know. I mean and to be I mean, let's be real, Lyle could win the race. He's I could. I could. Lyle's I gonna could. be in a in a I hot could. rod. And Lyle's Lyle's a bad dude, and he's Man, the team that Lyle's driving for. I mean, Lyle's got everything it takes to win. I do. Literally every single thing it yeah. takes to win that yeah. race. And Travis Harvey has already told me, he's like, dude, if you don't fuck this up, yeah. <laughs> it's on you. you as can as win this race. Because you, win you race. got a hot that, car, that car. So, all right. So, I'll reveal a little uh, personal information. I almost drove that car before travis harvey when that car became available last year that's when the idea really started to like get in my head pretty hardcore and i wanted to drive that car so bad because that car is just 
It's just a racehorse that has a serious pedigree. Dude, that car's a bad motherfucking hot rod. It is. Dude, that car is a You are a leaving, driving son of a bitch. So I just hope I don't fuck this up. Are you excited? Yeah, don't fuck this oh, up. Look, I'm more nervous about fucking it up. Because don't I know. Me. Because I know. I'm like, I tell you like I tell Erica. I know that I've got would, a hot rod. Why would you nah, you've got a hot like rod. Like, you and you stay cool and collected. You're gonna do great. And like who's who tunes that one? Petty? Yeah. Bro. You got Bill Petty. Man, fucking Bill Yeah, That car and Tidwell. And Tidwell does whatever you gotta do to win. Hundred percent. I mean, he's like, he, he told me the other day, he said, it only gets cheaper from here the more you win. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll say this. I don't, I never, I never try to pick a winner, but if I had to, you'd be in my top three. Let's go. Stop. Yeah, Let's you'd go. be in my top three. I'll pick that. I'll say that. Let's I'll say go. that. I'll I'm probably going to get I'll shit for this all that. next week. You are going my to. Two birds. Actually, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to pick a winner. I think Mark Mickey's going to put your ass on the trailer. That's my boy. I'm riding with Mark Mickey. Yeah. That car, yeah. that car, special to me now. Bias. That's my baby. Okay, I'm picking Mark Mickey. That drive his car. He's probably fluffing you. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I did not see this coming. I was my favorite pro mod ever. Me. I've said it before. I love and I love a lot of these cars. My favorite pro mod ever is that blue car. It's a bad bitch. That's for sure. Just so you, it. BMP, <clears throat> VMP. There are very few tracks, in my opinion, that are good at the hybrid prep, right? Good enough prep for the for the radial cars. Probably a little too good, but let's call it good enough prep for the pro mods to go out there and run the numbers we need to run to put on a good show. Moving forward, and maybe I put you on the spot, but fuck it. Moving forward, are you dedicated to the radial game, or do you foresee – these two races, the, the Snowbirds and the U.S. Street Nationals, adapting some PDRA Pro Street and Super Street style cars and going all slick tire and away from the radials altogether. Um, so I'd be lying if I said I haven't thought about it. <clears throat> I have. Um, I think the radial stuff is like, I love radial racing. Let's let's start with. Oh, that. I, mean, I do too. That's where I came from. Yeah, like that's where I, that my first real wheel drive stuff that I really started like really doing was all radial stuff, and I love it. Um, radial stuff was in a very weird spot even just a year ago. Uh, now, say, I say that to say it's a possibility, and if it were to happen, it would happen at Snowbirds more than it would at US Street. Um, I'm pretty committed to the radial outlaws deal. Um, that finish line productions does and everyone involved with that and you know donald lung scott tidwell uh eric dillard i'm pretty committed to us street being the first race for their point series um from now until they say no uh because i firmly believe that that is what radio racing has needed for a very long time is a little bit of structure a point series something to go after something to look forward to and something to count on, right? Like it's hard for us as the racer, the team owner, to spend the money with a little bit of uncertainty in the air. So I think that the radio outlaws thing is like really good for the long term growth of radio racing, and I'm pretty committed to that because, I mean, if we're being real, it costs the tracks money to be a part of that series, and you know, it's like a donation, right? But I firmly believe that it's for, it's good for the growth of radio racing, and I'm going to stick with it. Yeah. So, from as a track owner and somebody who sees the money come in and the money go out, very briefly, talk about expense wise when it comes to prepping for a radio race. And I don't know how many. Do you have any slick tire only races really at all? No, we don't. Um, well, then you we really, know. yeah, we. I mean, we, used, really we used to, but we really don't. Um, and it's, yeah, it's expensive to do radio. Like if you do it an is. event, just radio prep, you're going to spend a lot of money in glue and yeah. then, you know, and they expect a good payout, right? So yeah. there's a huge payout. There's a lot of staff because you're prepping and doing stuff nonstop. Yeah. Um, there's a ton of expense between, you know, which, you know, glue tires, methanol, all the stuff that goes with that. Some of these guys, they're not as fortunate to have, you know, we have Wade Rich, which arguably one of the best to ever do it, in my opinion, is probably the best to ever do it. Yeah. Um, a lot of these tracks don't have that. So they're flying in Jimmy Bradshaw or they're flying in Kurt Johnson. Yeah. It's expensive. 
Yeah, and that is more, even more so why I'm committed to this Radio Outlaws deal because the car counts are going up, the sponsors are coming in. Like, you know, it's just, it's, we're solidifying our, our spot in the world as you know, drag racing with radials. And I think it's going to grow the sport quite a bit. Well, I think you've solidified your spot in the world of drag racing 100%. eternally down there. It's just, it, it's just so cool. You know, no, Courtney, I don't have a question. I'm just going to fluff him a little bit. <laughs> He's doing this because he knows we're going to line up at some point. I'm yeah. not going to take it easy on you. That's fine. That's fine. Just don't, again, don't yeah, give, don't us, give your wife my phone number when she needs some help. With us two in the room, yeah. But you just go ahead and keep bluffing him. But, you, know, we, you know, we just appreciate all that you do, all your staff does, everybody that, that supports BMP is a huge part of what goes on there, I know, and, and it's just cool to see. But in closing, Victor, and I know. One last question. I have one last question. Do, I know you, or, do you or do you not like Mexican restaurant served fajitas. You're a damn fool if you think I don't. Something serious. I have never agreed with Richard Freeman so fast in my damn <laughs> life. Something's wrong with you. You should get I'm checked li- out. I'm losing you're, it No, you're I'm sick. You're sick. Back. No, I'm not. You're sick. We. I think for. I might have fajitas catered to your pit. Oh my sober. god, Victor! Please do. I'm. No. I got five. On he deserves it. it. He deserves it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna call the Mexican local delicacy. I'm gonna call the local. And you can get fajitas at Chili's. I'm gonna call the local waste management distributor there and have (laughs) a dumpster dropped off across Florida. I don't give a fuck. I'll throw every one of them away. You can't call anybody. Your own that motherfucker. Trash. I'll starve. Yeah, whatever. I'm gonna feed you fajitas. I I did want to say too, because and you you know you guys have mentioned uh, motion earlier. Shout out to Motion Raceworks. Um, those guys, Doug and the entire crew, it starts with Doug, but like literally everybody involved with motion is just awesome. And what they do for our sport, they stepped up big to help grow the snowbirds because they, you know, Doug just believes in the track, believes in the event and believes in the sport, believes in the racers. Um, they're a great title sponsor. They're freaking awesome. Um, so shout out to them. Hopefully we can see some people next week. There's, we got some grudge races locked in. We've got radio stuff going on. Uh, we got pro mod stuff going on, night of fire. It's going to be insane. So hopefully we get. Some we're we're just a out. little over a week away. Like the snowbirds is next yeah. weekend. So as soon as you so button your pants back up from Turkey, it's time for snowbirds. <laughs> Good God <laughs> Almighty! <laughs> All right, Victor. Well, we appreciate you coming on, buddy. Thank you guys. I'll, Have a I'll good night. You. I'll see you about All right. Monday. All right. All right. Later. All right. Guys. So the guy, the guy from Motion, called me or text me. Are we done? Yeah, can we do let's that? bring Clay on. Let's bring our first guest on real quick while we do that. All right, he's backstage. Bring him on, Clay Milken. Roll that there beautiful bean footage. It's there Thanksgiving is. time, and our friend Clay Milliken is the here. Best <laughs> smiling top fuel right there. All right, good evening, everybody. Happy hey, Thanksgiving, man. Thanksgiving, Clay. This is awesome. Top fuel gangster in the house. I, I like my little title there. You are a yeah. top gangster. You're a gangster in all things. Everything. <laughs> all right, Clay, you're going to be on with us live. We're going to call the winner of the Motion Race Works Pay Your Tab. Right oh, now. I've been seeing that. Right now. Hello? Greg? This is Lyle Barnett live on the Shake and Bake Show. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, Tell me, and Clay Milliken. And Clay Milliken. He's listening in. And uh, she's a scrub. You know, she's named Erica Ender's sister, Courtney, maybe, oh, something gosh. like that. I don't even know her middle name. Probably Diane or something. Anyway, <clears throat> um, Doug Cook had me give you a call. And uh, you are today's, or actually yesterday's, lucky winner of the Motion Race Works Pay Your Tab giveaway. So that order you placed yesterday for, I think it was a shifter? Uh, no, I actually bought some um, billet valve covers. So billet valve, that's right. Expensive. So he said, uh, yep, the billet valve covers, you get that shit for free, dog. Man, I get there tomorrow. Well, they're going to refund you um, uh, for, for that order you placed. And uh, and obviously, hopefully, you'll just turn around and spend that money back on something else for your hot rod there. What do you got? What you building? 
uh, <laughs> a twin turbo Nissan 370Z. It sounds like a twin turbo Dodge pickup truck. <laughs> uh, well, you did the Mac Fab uh, uh, rear wheels on them. There so we go. The slow motion leg hump. You probably, should probably remember uh, carving those up. I do. We engraved slow motion leg hump in some wheels. That's right. I forgot about that. Well, that's cool, dude. I uh, just wanted to call and let you know you uh, they're going to be refunding you your money. And uh, congratulations, man. Well, hey, thank you. Uh, yep. Thanks. I appreciate it. And uh, I'd like to tell Doug thanks. So if he's watching, I appreciate it. All the motion team. Awesome, man. We appreciate it. Right. See you, buddy. Thank you, guys. Yep. Man, that's freaking cool. <laughs> See, he's the most. There's something I want to say to the future winners of that giveaway. He's the most excited. Like that dude was excited. I felt like he was it's excited. It's because Clay Milliken's on the phone. Well, maybe so. But the previous <laughs> winners, this has been like, man, that's that's pretty, that, that's so pretty cool. Like, I got to preempt. I got to preempt this because we've people don't like when we go over two hours, but I don't really care. I only care because Matt. We have some people waiting backstage, and this is now the Friendsgiving portion of this show. And Clay Milliken was our first guest because he is the most avid watcher of any star that we have. Erica watches sometimes all the things. Clay Milliken's there every freaking week. So I feel like Clay Milliken gets the MVP guest slash viewer slash shake and baker of the year. And we are thankful for you, Clay Milliken. Thank you. The even, show even, is awesome. Even and though I you always... finished the year minus 74, Clay. We still oh, are. God damn it. <laughs> I am, uh, since it's, it's Thanksgiving, I am uh, thankful for the world's largest sanctioning body that takes six <laughs> days to tell you you've been disqualified. I am thankful for the world's largest sanctioning body that left something land on the racetrack that ruined the race car at 331 miles an hour. But I, more than anything, I'm, I'm thankful that uh, I'm on the show tonight because yes. of you two. And not yeah. only because it's a great show. I had to be on the show tonight because this is episode number 25. Is it really? It really is. Things happen for a reason, Lyle. Every freaking time, Clay. Something is supposed to happen. I had no idea. Oh, believe me, I did. Unbelievable. Woo. That is insane. And did I knew it. Did you know that tonight? Courtney? Not until he just started to say that, but I saw it on the on the um thumbnail. But until he just said that, it didn't click. And now I have goosebumps all over my body and I want to cry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I honestly didn't know it until I was uh, exceeding the speed limit to get home so that I wouldn't be late. And I did the same thing, Courtney. I looked at my phone and I, I saw the little thumbnail. I'm like, oh, I'm not missing this. You can't. You, what y'all people don't know that are watching, she sent me a text. If you can't make it, it's okay. And I'm like, I'm not missing this. I, saw, I just saw it was episode 25. And so I downshifted about two gears in that little little Hemi truck and rolled on to the house hey, here. Hey, I love you so much. I truly do. <laughs> oh my gosh. For the, for the thousand of you that are watching, uh, Clay Milliken tragically lost his son several years ago. And, and Dalton's number on his motocross, he yep. raced four wheelers, right? Yep. Was 25. 25. Um, everything's and, 25. And everything's 25. And there's... So many things have happened just over this past year, right? You know, oh, it's, that, it's, it's that, always that something. Reference, and it's always something that references 25. And we did not bring Clay on tonight because tonight was the 25th episode. It never dawned oh, on Oh, we me. brought him because we're thankful it's, for his support. Right. <laughs> and and this, is, this is the 25th episode. And, you know, it, it just shows that he's still there. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It means a lot. Well, Absolutely. this will flow well then. We have someone else sitting backstage that, Clay, you don't even know who's there, but I feel like it's going to hit you in the feels here. Matt, I feel like I'm being Harry Potter and just waving my wand, but if we can bring her on, let's bring her on. There Andy Smith, is. a part of our Friendsgiving tonight. <laughs> Another blessful soul that we're glad you're still on this earth, Andy. <laughs> right? Yes. And we're glad you still have all of your toes. Holy moly, girl. I look, I graduated today. I have Let's no go. I was about to ask how many, how many boots we got on tonight. <laughs> no boots anymore. That's awesome. What kind of, dare I say, balls does it take to show up at the banquet in a hot pink feathered dress with boots on? I mean, I had to do it because I bought me some nice shoes and I couldn't get my foot in them. And I was like, I'm owning it. I had yeah. bandages on my arm. I owned it on the stage. I mean, I had to. I so, think it's just freaking awesome that you did that. 
Angie, you did some skin graft stuff yeah, on the I arm? Did they, yeah. Graft here, and I have one on my right toe. And that's a 100% reason why Matt Smith would not let me run it out at Pomona. If it had to do with me, I was going it, all out. Down there. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah, just going to ask you, Angie, tell tell us a little bit. And again, this we're just sitting at the Friendsgiving table. Everybody get your cocktails out. Get your questions in the in the um, comment section. But that whole process of getting approved to run again, I know that anyone inside and outside the NHRA was a little shocked of how that all went down. But um, talk about kind of the end result of how you got to do those those runs. Well, I went to my doctors and they were like, uh, you know, I had to have – so. Let me back up. When I wrecked in St. Louis, Tony and Leo were so gracious, flew me home. You guys come to the hospital and see me and like pulled my heartstrings out and all of that good stuff. I got home and I knew it was really, really important that I had to rest, even though I'm not a person to rest. You are not that guy. <laughs> um, so they basically locked me in the house. They would not let me out or go in. And I literally laid in the bed for, you know, three, four, five days. And I had to go to the doctors. I had doctor's appointments and I had a, a cast on my right leg and my orthopedic doctor cut the cast off because he's like, I just got to see everything. And that's where they discovered the place on my toe that had not been dressed, had not been cleaned out, had not whatever. And they were like, we got to get this handled. Um, my dad, um, used to work at Baptist Hospital. Matthew's mom works at Baptist Hospital. So I had people in my corner that worked at the hospital that I was going to. You know, they made the right calls. I was in the orthopedics in two days. And the next day I was at the plastics doctor having reconstructive surgery um, for the first layer, which they put Integra in my arm and Integra in my toe for skin grafts. And then seven to 10 days later, I did my skin grafts. So I was like, I got to heal. I got to heal. Rumor mill started. They were like, not yay, Angie's hurt, but hey, that gives 11 and 12 an opportunity to get in the countdown. And I was like, oh, no. Wait. <laughs> that's when the horns went up and the muscles come out and I'm like, they're not, they're not going to push. They're going to have to earn it. They're going to have to earn it. So I got better and um, I went to my doctors and they were like, okay. And I told them that the order of the stuff that I was going to do, like Vegas, if there was not going to be 16 bikes, I was the 16th bike that I was just going to go down the track. I was not going to go fast. I promised him I was not going to go fast. So I actually wore Matt's shoe on my right foot because I have a skin graft on my right foot. And I wore my shoe on the left and um, went, took the tree, went down the track. And I swear, like after I did the burnout in Vegas, Matt comes up to me. He was like, is everything okay? Do you feel okay? And I was like, can I go all the way? He said, Absolutely not. <laughs> you could not. Did you say la 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 la? So then um, <laughs> that worked out to our benefit. Then we went to Pomona, and um, I had to agree to only run it to thousand foot, even though I really, really wanted to run it all the way. I mean, I mean, after the bike starts up and you do your burnout, like get it. Yeah. It doesn't hurt anymore. Nothing hurts anymore. You're not sick I, I anymore. I'd have just had to take that ass chewing down there. <laughs> like, Even Richard said, Richard Freeman said, why don't you run that mf -er out? And he goes, I said, I won't have a ride home, Richard. He said, I'll get you home. He would have. I know. He was going to fly me home. <laughs> then I Matt would really that. be mad because that would have been the second private jet I, I rode on. And then he'd <laughs> really be mad. <laughs> it's like yeah. Matt needs to buy you a private plane is what it sounds yeah. like. Well, yeah. we got to spend money on racing. You know how that goes. <laughs> Clay, did you, did you get to, I know that we live on different ends of the world in the pro stock and the top fuel ranks, but did you get to watch any of that whenever Angie got back on that bike? What were you thinking? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just thinking that's Angie. I mean, I know how tough she is. Most people do, but everybody knew the moment that she could get back on it, she was going to do it. And, yeah, it didn't surprise me at all. <laughs> toes hurting or not i knew like that girl's fixing to let go of that clutch and go down that racetrack i knew that was coming because that's what we do we race yeah. and she's Clay, one of the most aggressive humans ever like there was no <laughs> keeping her down oh, yeah. yeah 
Clay, you Man, spent the I'm weekend here. at the Freedom Factory. I did. I did. And I'm telling y'all. So Stevie and I did that a couple years ago. Yeah. Uh, we ran the 2.4 hours of Lamola. It's one of the best experiences ever. Yes. Uh, the show they put on there, all the things that go into making that deal happen, seeing it from behind the scenes is one thing. Watching it from the stands is another. And uh, but tell us a little bit about it, your experience, uh, what you got to do there, and, and how it went. So Cletus has been inviting me for a little while now, and and it always seemed to fall on a race weekend. And obviously, I can't miss a race to go do that. But it finally worked out. You know, it's like okay, I can do this. And initially, it was supposed to be me and Jeff Lutz, which was you know kind of a natural fit, just like you and Stevie doing it together. But at the end of the day. Uh, Discovery rescheduled a race and, and Jeff couldn't be there. So they, they put me with a guy named Kevin Smith, which I know Kevin, he, if y'all watch some of my YouTube videos, he's been on there and he's won like three or four of the Cletus races. So he's pretty good at it. So I, I kind of had an ace in the hole, so to speak for a guy that has never done any zero circle track racing. And I heard you talking to Victor about Garrett might change the rules if he could. So uh, Kevin qualified third, I do believe, and, and, and Garrett did not. And they inverted the field, which put me in the back. So I started at the very back, which probably was okay. You know, I've never done this stuff. And all said and done, I finished 10th in my driving stint. So I, yeah. I passed. Yeah, Andy, I love you. We're so supportive. <laughs> yeah. So I passed seven cars. I passed seven cars. There was 20 cars in it. And I started third from the back and man, what a deal. You talk about bumping and banging. I mean, it's, it's exactly like going to putt putt on go-karts with all your buddies and everything gets out of control. But the difference is, is you're in a full size freaking car with, you know, seven, eight, 10,000 people watching you. And so, the show was one it's of un it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So yeah, I did I did not strap show. in as tight as I should have when I got in the car. Don't and like what no, listen, once you start the race, like you can't be like, uh, I need to tighten my belts like that. Like, yeah, no, breaker breaker, breaker tighten up. <laughs> Sucks yeah. for you there, ghost rider. You know, so by I don't know, I probably ran 10 lap. Uh, nah, yeah, probably 10. And I was falling out of they call it falling out of the seat. Like I literally could not hold myself in the seat anymore. I was dry. Well, I can't drive anyway, but I was just driving like a complete ass hat and having to find <laughs> something to brace on to hold myself up, you know? And when I did it, it was the kidney bean, right? That's it wasn't what, all, it that's wasn't. what it was when I did it. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't all left handers. You'd go in there and dive left, dive right, dive left, yep. dive right, you know? And I literally, now I got in a little bit of a crash, something that probably a more experienced round track driver could have saved, but I was so wore out. I just kind of let it, I just let it crash. <laughs> like I couldn't do anything else. Uh, it, it, it's incredible. I mean, the show is, is unbelievable. I mean, he had two monster trucks jump from outside of the racetrack into the infield to start the show. I mean, it was just wild. And, and I mean, I don't know if y'all have seen it, but if you haven't, you got to go look at it, look it up, look, go to the Freedom Factory on Instagram. They had a little van race before the, the police car race that I was in. Stock vans right out of the junkyard, wherever they come from. One of the guys jumped the van during the race 129 feet. No, that, I think that was some of the Nitro Circus crew that did that. But I bet that shit didn't feel good. I mean, I, I know his back's got to be hurting because, I mean, we're not talking racing seat, shoulder straps, just a well, freaking yeah, lap this belt. Is a, this you is know? a Dodge Caravan. Dodge yeah, Caravan. Watch. It's yeah. crazy. But, I mean, it's it's pretty dang cool. I mean, I got to race and bump with Jeremy McGrath. Like, I yeah. bumped side slap with Jeremy McGrath out there. Haley Deegan was out there. while I didn't see her. She was up front. But – but it was it was pretty dang cool. I mean, it was so many big name people out there in that deal. I mean, it was an incredible show. Just aside from being in it, like that that guy's got it going on. He's really really moving the needle right now in the motorsport deal. Yeah, I I filmed my right off track for Flow Racing podcast this morning, and I had Elon Warner on it. It's going to air on Monday. But we talked about this, Clay, and even Angie, I feel like Pro Stock Motorcycle is their own union and entity in this kind of stuff, too. So you have a vote. It's going to get to the point where just racing is not enough. 
Like racing is cool. And what we do is amazing, but we've been doing the same thing and you've got to step outside of the box for this stuff. So like, Angie, like what's something that, what's a race you've wanted to go to or something crazy that you've wanted to go to and see something like this? Well, I mean like this, like the, the, the freedom factory stuff. I think they had one of those races in Indy, right? Before yes. we went up there and I saw all that and I was like, this is what we need. They need to do it. Like, like they need to run top fuel in the morning and top fuel in the evening and do this in the middle of the day. So everybody's sees all this they need to have drifters there they need to merge the other sports together and like bring all the new fans in i mean i've always said that they need to do the concerts they need to do all of that they just they need to blow it out of the water texas does a really good job yeah. of doing that they have yeah. 10 days of stuff from bull riding to what concerts to to drag racing to whatever Stampede Speed blows it out of the water. We need more races like that. We need it. Maybe not 10 days because the Lord knows we can't say they're 10 days every every week. We'd just be on the road. But we weren't needed for all of the parts of it. Yes. They, right. They we right. And we and we need to do that stuff more. We need to other racetracks need to take what they have started and make that you know, make that their guidelines and do stuff like that, because I think you will involve more fans. You'll get new fans. And I think it's really important. I, mean, well, I said that it, I said that earlier in the show is that no prep Kings is at a pivotal point. If they're going to continue to pack the places that they go to and it, but because they, they put on the same show week in and week out. Right. right. And at some point, and, and we, but we've been saying this, I keep saying no prep Kings got another two years. That was five years ago, right? And they're still doing their thing. But at some point, people are like, all right, we watched this last year, right? You know, and it's the same shit going on. And, you know, and and I commend Wes Buck and all the people that are doing this pro deal, right? Like, this is a step in the direction that you're talking about, Angie. It's, we got to quit putting the same show on week in and week out, right? Like, not everybody wants to go. Because where, where we're at, Angie, because, you know, we're not far from each other here in North Carolina. We can be at an NHRA national event mm, four to five times a year in six right. or less hours, right? right. Like, so we don't want to go. I don't want to, as a fan, I wouldn't want to go to those, let's call it five of the six, and watch Traxxas cars. I know this is not what they're doing, but watch Traxxas cars jump trackside in between rounds, right, every week, right? Like, I love Jason Logan. Think he does a great job in the low zone, but right. Jesus Christ, you're wearing the dude out. Well, right. I have I have a treat right now. We have the footage of what you guys were talking about. Dion sent me exactly what you were. So Matt's got it uploaded and ready. Let's take a look at what we were just talking about. Let's see it. <laughs> God bless Dion Walrath coming in hot. God dang it, man. And he won the race. He oh, won the race. After he did that? That was his the last lap. So that was the Joker lane. So <laughs> one lap you had to hit that ramp. And that was the last lap for that guy. 129 well, feet. Now that's that is hitting the Joker in style. Yes. But now I don't think they need to put ramps on the racetrack and have Angie Smith jump her motorcycle. Right. Like <laughs> let's not, it. that's the bravest bitch I know. I mean, I'd, not, it. I'd try it once. <laughs> let's not do that. But I do agree 110% with what Angie says. Like at some point with, within the NHR, we've got to start stepping outside. Right. So you they know? already know this. So y'all know they did a Cletus and cars event during a points race. Yeah, it, it NHRA crazy. poured a concrete pad for Cletus to have at the U.S. at, at Indy. Yeah, there, Scotty Cannon in the house. Yeah, Scotty Cannon. Oh Scotty my goodness! Scotty Cannon in the house. <laughs> That's awesome. Sorry, keep going. that is awesome. But they poured a concrete pad at Indy just for Cletus and Cars burnouts competition during the points race. I had a lot of a lot of my crew guys that went. And they said it looked like the U.S. Nationals was happening, mm -hmm. oh, not yeah. because of the points race, but because of the Cletus and Cars event that was going on. It was all the stands. It was packed. Yeah, and like, if that doesn't that doesn't tell you everything you need to know. 
right? Yeah. yeah. Because the the if there's so much out there now to be entertained by. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to travel and get a hotel room and watch a race to be entertained anymore, right? Like I can I can be entertained anywhere around here, right? Like we just go outside and walk Here's down the, the road. Thing, like the NHRA, I feel like this era we're in now with these podcasts and why we wanted to do this extended show tonight just to hang out with our friends. But there's personalities and there's people in this sport that have the ability of that fan factor, that love factor, that addiction factor that NASCAR had back in the day while we all wore three, while we all wore 24, all the things. But we've never really given ourselves that platform to do it. And I think that now we're just allowed to do it ourselves. And Clay, you're doing a freaking phenomenal job. We talked about it on my podcast Thank earlier you. today. Elon brought it up. Like, it doesn't have to change the game. You just got to film it, put it out there, and be yourself and we're going to be able to take this sport to the next level of doing little things like that and putting girls like Angie and I don't mean girls, it could be a guy or a girl, but you're my girl, but <laughs> personalizing this of like your boots with your dress, as silly as that may seem to somebody that freaking means something. And that shows exactly the character and the tenacity of what you've done and what you've been through to stand where you're standing on that freaking red carpet. But we've never, as a collective group with the NHRA, put our eggs in the basket of the personalities. And I say, why the hell not? I just do it myself. You do do it yourself. And it's freaking awesome. I'm going to completely derail like this upbeat, positive deal we've got going and, and ask yeah, Angie, and ask Angie the question I've wanted to ask the whole time. So. Andy okay. Smith, Matt Smith Racing, uh, a prominent name in Pro Stock Motorcycle. I love the class. I try to go up there and watch Joey Gladstone, a very good friend of mine. Um, you guys, good friends of mine, and I love watching you guys do what you do. But this year, more so than any that I can remember, was as one-sided as I've ever seen it, right? Gage Herrera just absolutely dominated the entire year. And I'm not saying it's Gage Herrera that did it. I have saw some posts from you guys regarding – rules uh or the lack thereof surrounding their combination moving into 2025 for matt smith racing has a plan i know it there's no doubt about it but what do you do to one bounce back and to regain uh your the dominance you guys once had and 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 run up front pro stock motorcycle you don't worry we're coming back swinging because matt smith um i think that he had a little bit of help with the people that were pushing him to go Suzuki route. They wanted to get him off the V-twin because I felt like that that was the only way that they had a chance at winning a championship. Well, I won this battle now because he's coming back V-twin. And it's going to be me, Matt, and Gianna on V-twins next year. And yeah. we're coming out guns a-blazing because you know what? The day that trailer truck and trailer got home, we have already got four chassis in the works. We got motors ordered. We have been working. I don't know what everybody else has been doing, but we've been working. Well, I knew, you know, and Matt gets it honest. You know, like there, I make no bones about it. Me and Ricky haven't, don't necessarily get along. Um, but there's nobody that's worked harder and nobody that has been as successful in the pro modified world as Ricky Smith and Matt got it on us you know you guys do work hard i see it um and and i hope that that you're right you know and and i believe in you you know but, but you know obviously we don't we don't know anything until the tires turn over in gainesville so okay. i you know but i'm pulling for you you know I, I would love to see you guys come back and and do what we all know you're capable of doing um, it was just an odd year and i just kind of wanted to, the people to hear what the MSR plan was for 2020. Listen, before she talks, we're going to have Matt and Angie on together as guests to really dive into this very <laughs> soon. So we ain't getting too far, but Angie, go ahead. <laughs> um, it was really a boring and a very trying year when you, not per se that you know you don't have a chance, but you know you don't have a chance. And um, the rules were a lot in, the favor, in their favor. And we all know that if it was anybody else but that black trailer doing what happened getting out running 10th we know that we just know that matt smith racing couldn't have did that because of last year when he outrun at denver a half a tent and we got 15 pounds put on us yeah so. it's just like pro mod it's just like pro mod 
I don't want to hear that. It makes me not want to rake pro stock motorcycle, which I never would. I don't have anything to do with those two wheel fucking banshees. No, ma'am. Lyle Barnett Lyle. does not does Lyle Clay, Barnett does you, not. You and Clay do a package deal. Courtney, try. I tell you what. I tell you what. Package deal, Clay. I got the throttle. It ain't for me. You got the gear shifter. We're riding this pony <laughs> double dog. That me shit was you. so scary. Right down through there. I'm out. Courtney. I'm out. I got I got a I got a CRF 110 and a Honda Ruckus, and that's as fast as I'm going. The Mike Salinas video and the Carl Salinas video was the greatest because we kind of make it look a little bit easier than it is. You do. When, when you tell them that you have to floor it and let the clutch go and keep your hand open just in case in the 60 foot in case something happens, they're like, are you sure? I, I have a general consensus <laughs> after doing that. And all I've done was warm up we did some like downhill burnout. stuff of this body control some burnouts a little baby launch if you're not good at video games of being able to do multiple things with multiple facets of your hands do not try to ride a fucking pro stock motorcycle <laughs> because it is you can't press x y and z at the same time don't do it <laughs> it is out of control out of control and you i will have like five control. different people telling you how to do stuff too i have it? this memory and it is it's a memory, it's a dream, and it's a nightmare all in the same sense because only you and the few people there that know what happened. I was there with a select group of people, and they were amazing. But I tested this pro stock motorcycle at the Monday Nationals after Vegas. Yeah, Everyone was there. It was horrible. I'm rolling through the water box. We did a day of training, and I'm rolling through the water box about to do my first burnout. And like in this you moon of people, I see Andrew Hines, Eddie Krawick, Matt Smith, Angie Smith, Angel Sampe, Karen Stouffer, Ryan O, like everyone I've ever respected, I can see it clear as day. And every single one of them told me something different. Every single one of them. And I was freaked out. I was panicked. It was the worst situation ever, but it was pretty awesome. And I still go back to that. The reason it was a nightmare because it was stressful, but the reason that it was a dream that who am I to be sitting on that machine in those cool leathers to have the greatest that ever lived try and help me. And that was fucking cool. And that was amazing. But I'm too much of a P word to do it. So I'm out. Oh, stop it. <laughs> it just you know needed a better, it needed a better situation. Yeah. It was bad. But I had the coolest MFers that ever lived do it. So um I just got Clay, a text. Clay, is there enough money to get you on a pro stock motorcycle? Yes, let's no. do it. Come no. on. <laughs> no. Well, I'm with telling that I'm telling y'all when when I did all that time in IHRA. I would rush up to watch Jay the Bulldog Turner because that guy could, he, he could ride. Oh, Matt and Angie can ride. I love watching. I love the, the like with Angie, you know, like the finesse that y'all have. And then, you know, like when, when I mentioned Jay the Bulldog Turner, those that y'all don't know is a Nitro Harley. That is just like pure freaking muscle Power. wrestling you know at 200 miles an hour i'm like nope give me a, a top fuel car with three tires on it going 331 i don't want two tires <laughs> their legs are out their arms are out it's crazy it's a, yeah. it's a different deal i have so much respect for you too will especially you angie after you got back on that horse yes. girlfriend it yeah. does not i, I don't i'm not gonna fluff you like lyle was fluffing victor but i mean it <laughs> He, he didn't even hear that. He heard it. That was one of the most strong-willed, inspirational things. When I came and we saw you at that hospital and I expected you to feel the way we all felt because when you left that racetrack, we were all hurt. We were down. We were not positive about how you were based on how they handled it. And to see you the way that you were that day was inspiring. It was like get off your ass. You're a loser. Angie Smith is doing better things than you. And she has 87 <laughs> injuries. Like one of the coolest things. And if you don't know that Angie Smith is the hardest working girl in drag racing, you know it now, period, yep. period. 100%. Clay, you agree. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, we're talking about somebody that uh, so much wanted to be in the top 10. She jumps on the bike with skin grafts and broken little toes. I mean, come on. They ain't Crazy. pushing me out. I'm not, it's not going to be easy for us. That's what I kept telling myself. And I, 
when I rounded the corner of Pomona and I knew I was going a thousand foot, I was like, you've done this a thousand times. I was like my middle coach all in myself. I know Erica was there and you were there too, Courtney. And I was going, you've done this a thousand times. You can do this. It's a thousand times you've done this. You know how to do this. And I just kept telling myself. And then after that, it was fun. You were the queen. We all stood behind you. I've never been more proud of anything in my life. And it was, it was amazing. But um, we have one. I know we've gone long. I told y'all on our Facebook story today, we were going to go long. Stevie's going to yell at us, Lyle. But he ain't here today. So I we don't him. hear it. What's he going to do? Fire you? Yeah, after the fact. Right. This is a volunteer job. Like, I made it clear this morning. I'm sorry. I said, I have a real job. I'll get to shake and bake in a minute. I got a real job. Get it <laughs> twisted. But um, Clay, is there, I want to, before we let you go, because I'm going to, like, we integrated you. Our, our last guest, I'm going to integrate with Angie. But, oh, she left. I'll get her back. Um, Clay, things you're thankful for this year. What are you most thankful for this year? Oh, man, I thought I kind of did that a while ago. But uh, I'm, you might I have. I'm sorry. That's all right. I'm definitely thankful for the Shake and Bake show. Yes, I tune in and, and check it all out. And I am definitely thankful for uh, the opportunity to do what we do. Everybody on this screen right here, we don't really have a job. Mile, I guess you, I think you do enjoy MacFab. I think you do. And I know that is kind of a job, but yeah, but well, I still it, love it. It's, it's still involving the racing world. And that's probably, you know, aside from family, which that, that's, that's easy. Everybody knows me and family that that's the primary number one thing there is for me, period. Yeah. But uh, man, I, I love the opportunity to, to race and get to continue to race. And I'm just going to keep doing it as long as I can. Well, I'm thankful. I love you so much. You're a great friend. You're a great competitor. And we're going to get them 60 some odd points back for you next year. Let's 74. Go. 74. Can, I, can I say one more thing about that? Yes. Sure. That's the second time NHR is taking a semifinal finish away from me. You're listen, you're coming back as a, as a primetime guest and we're going to dig into it. Mm. Twice. They've done that to me. Ooh. Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Oh. Hey, Milliken, we love you so much. Love y'all. Thank you. Love everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you, Clay. See you guys. Guys, you've hung, out. you've hung out. This has been a long one. We have one more person to help us close out the show. As soon as we let Clay go, we're going to bring her on. Or are we going to bring her on? There she oh. is! <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't do it. I know. We even talked about it, and Stevie said, well, we brought Eric on a few times, this and that. First things first, you just won the championship. Second thing second, your girl Angie Smith's on here. And third thing third, we're being thankful for guests of the Shake and Bake. And you are a shake and baker. So welcome to the I show. I am. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Hi, Angie. Hi, Lyle. Hi, Erica. Hey. Hi. Yeah, so we tow back in front of the grandstands. And they're not like, hey, go champion. They're like, shake and bake, Courtney. Woo. <laughs> Thank you. It's so funny. They don't even chant for Eric anymore. They just chant for you. <laughs> So awesome, and she just looked at me like I know she's pissed, but she can't be pissed. I'm not pissed. I'm excited. A little. I remember one of the you first times you go, you go. They're yelling for you. <laughs> <laughs> we were a big deal, and you we're kind of a big deal. I mean, yeah, you are because you've had like a thousand people on this whole night. It's freaking awesome. It is oh, awesome. I ran out of goldfish. I wondered what you were eating. I, 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 was eating I haven't had dinner yet. Oh. This has been awful. So this has been the longest show in eternity. But as you guys are both here, and sorry, Lyle, I'm kind of boss hogging this ladies That's hour, fine. but you didn't hear good. out. <laughs> I don't think people understand how close you two are. And I want, doesn't matter, Erica, Angie, just before you guys race, that little kiss, kiss, Courtney, tell her I'm here, this and that, the mental capacity. Let's go, Erica, first. Give the fans a little bit of an insight of, of how close you and Angie really are. Well, like really a lot, <laughs> and it, but it didn't start off that way. We were, you know, a lot of girls out yeah. there are very, are very standoffish from each from each other. Um, but it started with uh, Mark Stockseth. He sponsors both Angie and Matt's team and our team, and um, so we got to know each other better with that partnership there. But getting to see Angie, like the dynamic of her and Matt, um, is very similar to what Courtney and I have to deal with at Elite. <laughs> In a way, um, <laughs> Matt's not quite as mean as, as our guys are, but um, sometimes, come on. 
Um, but we became friends and she would come over and they would eat supper in our pit area. And th that's how it started. And then I got to watch her evolve as a rider and a racer. And I watched how, this is what I respect about her and few people out there put in the work and she freaking grinds like on Thursday, she's up there in her tank top with a big gun showing, putting up awning poles, swinging big bags out of the trailer and throwing them on the lift gate. And I mean, she just, she works her butt off and she became a student of the game and she became a better rider and a better racer. And we got to win together in Vegas. And I mean, I could go on and on and on about this, but she's a, uh, She's freaking cool, man. She's badass and she's a good person. And um, there's not a lot of those out there. And I'm proud that she's my friend. So, and she scared me to death in St. Louis. So I didn't like that. <laughs> Angie, give us, give us a little insight about some of the, cause I get to see a different view, the mental stability and some things that you and Erica go with together about calming yourself and kind of be in the moment. So we, I, um, I don't know if it's me more than her, but we, both of us, we don't struggle, but we struggle in believing that we can do it and get the job done. And I don't know if where the self-doubt comes from, um, but it tries to creep in our brains. And it's people like Erica, like the whole reason why I won Pomona in 2022 last year is because of you two and Erica just she would come over there. Believe, believe you got this. Believe every round she told me that. And I believed it like, and I saw it happen and we went out there and we won the race. She won the championship and I won the race. We did it together at Pomona. We did it together at Vegas. And it's moments like that, that, that make your bond even closer. And a lot of people don't know this, but I think girls just overthink, we overthink stuff as racers. Oh, we whatever. all know that. Okay. Peanut gallery. We have stuff and, you know, we try not to let opinions matter of, you know, what people think of us, but they try to creep in and, and, it, and it sucks because it gets in your brain and then you have the self doubt and all that. And it's people like Erica that, you know, she has my back when I'm down and I have her back. I mean, I remember when it was the struggle bus in the first seven races of this year and i kept texting her even though we weren't there at some of them and i'm like keep your head up you got this you got this and it's moments like that and bonds and relationships that you have with special people like erica is it means so much to me and i'm so thankful to have you in my corner and in my life and we have such a great time together. A lot of people don't see us together because she's racing pro stock and I'm racing pro stock motorcycle, but they do see us when no matter if I'm sponsored by Denzo or whoever I'm sponsored by, I go up there and I stand on the starting line behind her and she does the same for me. And it's bonds like that are irreplaceable. Erica, talk about, sorry, Lyle. Erica, talk about, um, and we've only got about five minutes here. So let's be quick. Vegas. When Angie made that run, you and I stood there together. We both had like, oh my gosh, thoughts, like super proud thoughts, but just Erica Enders, the human being, what was going on inside you? Well, Angie um, didn't come to Dallas for obvious reasons, but we kept, she's like, you have to talk to Matthew. You have to talk to Matthew. Get Richard on Matt's ass. Like I'm coming to Vegas. I don't care what he says. And so I made Richard call Matt and she got to Vegas, but all this stuff was like working on behind the scenes. And now that it's over with, we can talk about it. But like when we were getting our hair and makeup done for the banquet, she's like, literally me and Matt and not even any of my team knew what was happening. But I told you that we were going to go out there and we were going to get our 30 points because of the crap that was going on behind the scenes. And like, that shows me all I need to know about Angie Smith. Like, she's like, I ain't letting them come in because she had a shot to win the championship this year. I mean, not, okay, whatever the other guy, but Gage. Right. But she had a shot to win, to, to finish three, four, you know, whatever. Yeah. And, and that happened in St. Louis. And she just, she rallied. Like, she got, she rested, she got healed up. She still got like open wounds on her and her doctors cleared her. And she's just like, she's so tough. And she went out there and, She's like, I'm getting my 30 points. They are not kicking me out of this top 10. And I'm like, you go, girl. So Courtney and I, I'm getting chill bumps right now. But Courtney and I went up and stood behind her bike. She's in the left lane in Las Vegas. And um, like, we I were just, crying. I'm crying. 
I have my sunglasses on, thank God, because I was just crying my eyes out because I'm just, I'm so proud of her. And, and that takes guts and balls and a lot of things that a lot of people don't have. And um, you can't, you can't say nothing bad about Angie Smith because she is the queen. I have to read a comment that just came apart from somebody who comes from my real life, not my racing life. Gary Eanes just said, check this out. Three badass chicks, one weird fajitaless dude on a drag race podcast. <laughs> now, changing the landscape and the history. GE money. <laughs> GE money. We love Gary Eames. Lyle, do you want to talk about how much you love me and Angie? So you can like interject here. Yeah, go ahead. Just, just, Give me the floor, Lyle. Let's look, go. I, look, I'm just out eyebrow <clears throat> at this point. <laughs> um, not, I mean, y'all, honestly, probably not because ain't none of y'all got real ones anyway. Oh, but fuck you. I do. These are real. Real. I don't even color them in. Erica. 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 Mine is real. Oh, I just have real? to like, pencil the ends in, you know. I don't even color mine. Erica. The closer you get, the more your eyes cross. Stay back. Don't talk shit about my sister. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> I will if I want. What are you going to do about it? Kick your fucking ass. Anyway, <laughs> say what you were going to say. Yeah, anyway. Um, <clears throat> No, I agree with, with with a lot of what Erica and, and Angie have said about each other. It's cool to see, you know, everybody says, oh, it's always the girls that rally around each other, but there ain't nobody else rallying around them, you know, and, and I do. I mean, you know, I am I stand behind both of you and, and think you do great things, And but it's cool to see you guys rally behind each other uh, from two different ends of the spectrum, one on two, one on four wheels, uh, you know, and for you guys to, to band together. Uh, Gianna is a part of your team as a female, um, you know, Lee in the top fuel car. It, it's cool. You girls always end up, you know, around each other and supporting each other. And, and that's what it takes, you know. And like I said, there's a lot less uh, behind you guys and supporting you than they are behind us dudes. And uh, if you girls got to do it on your own, you do a damn good job of it. And so I will we'll say, keep on man. keeping on. The BOT, but not not all of us stand behind each other. There's a, I feel like there's two oh, types there's of women out here. There is. And there's two very select <clears throat> groups. And if you pay attention, you'll figure out who's where. And that's all. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, look, there's, there, there was some comments in there about Lyle's just staying out of that. And I'm staying the fuck out of that. So I keep on with, no, yeah, on with your is, bad self. This has been great. And this has been the longest show ever. But um, before we before we sign off and get all thankful, Erica, let's talk about your sixth championship for just a second. Like, I read a couple of the comments. I've been seeing things that come through on our social media. And people are saying, oh, it's just another one. It's just this reiterate to the people how important every single one of these are to your guts. It's what you give your whole life for. I don't know how else to put it in layman's terms for people that don't sacrifice for what they love. They'll never understand. And they're usually the ones that are, that are chirping in the background. But when you like Courtney and I started racing junior dragsters when we were eight years old, since, since I first, started that car this has been it for me like i have dreamt about it and worked at it for 32 years now and like you have to it, it consumes every part of your life which in some areas really sucks and in other areas it's what makes you a champion so um it means everything to me it's what i wake up thinking about it's what i go to bed thinking about it's what i go to work every day for so um, yeah, it means a lot to me. And, and like Angie mentioned, the beginning of this year was, was awful for me. And it took her and my sister and my dad and, you know, my, my people in Texas, like just trying to keep that fire lit underneath me. But also like when you get down, like it's easy to be happy and positive when you're winning, but when you're in those like really low valleys, that's when it's really important to be positive and to believe in all of those things. And it sounds really lame, but it's what no. digs you out ditches and it's what makes you who you are and so yeah it means it means a lot yeah it's just another one but i want another one and another one and another one so it's i mean angie it's what we it's what we go out for we don't go to all these places across the country to visit we go out there to showcase our stuff to run a business and to park our cars and bikes in the winter circle but those are those moments when you two girls and i've seen it and i'm i'm blessed to be involved in it but and we do this with guys too. This isn't a feminist deal. We all voted for Trump in this room. It ain't no thing. But <laughs> y'all go to each other and you look each other in the guts. And when Erica's in the gully or when Angie's in the gully and you grab by the shoulders and say, get up, it's time to go. Like, this is what we've given our whole lives for. And I feel like 
I say this all the time on every podcast I'm on and all the things that I do, but that's what people don't understand. And I, I'm not a driver. I'm never going to be a six time champion. I'm never going to have no eyebrows like Lyle and drive beer money and whatever oh, oh. it is that he does. Oh, but we can my, that. my purpose is to try and make people see the realness of what's going on behind y'all's brains and inside y'all's hearts of like, when you pull each other out of the out of the dirt like that, and I've seen it, and it's beautiful, and it's freaking amazing, and whether it's to get back on the bike or whether it's to go win your sixth championship or whether it's to win your first race or whatever, but these are the moments I'm trying to bring to the world through flow, through shake and bake and all the things, and and you girls and even Lyle, like y'all, y'all help me do it. So that's what I am thankful for on this Friendsgiving. Oh, y'all, <laughs> shut up, Lyle. Nobody asked I'm, you. I'm thankful for Lyle Burnett and his encouraging text message that he sent me on Sunday morning. Thanks, Lyle. I did. Love you. I told her it's time to go do goat shit. Yeah. And she did. Hey, there's a picture of Erica and I that's now famous through the NHRA where we're FaceTiming you and my glasses are down after <laughs> Dallas and we were FaceTiming you. We we FaceTime oh. Lyle every time we win. That's yes, awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Every time. And Angie, she's usually right there next to me. She yeah. is. <laughs> she is. Well, this is freaking amazing. Lyle, you got any closing thoughts? We're going to close out with these girls. We're not going to let them go first. What's your closing thoughts? My closing thoughts are uh, don't eat too much on Thursday because we have to fit in fire suits on Monday. I don't. Well, the rest of us do because we're cool. And you're not. Um, <laughs> but we are thankful for all of you shake and bakers that stick on. This is two and a half hours. Crazy. Uh, on random Tuesday nights. I know it's not every other Tuesday. I got uh, death threats, terrible emails when we took the four week hiatus. I mean, I apologize, but at the same time, like Courtney said, we got real jobs. Um, but I'm thankful for all of you. Uh, Angie or very thankful that you're healing up, uh, and going to make a full recovery and coming back in 24. Erica, keep them crossed up. Let's go for seven, baby. Fuck you, Lyle. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> God damn. Hey, I would want anyone else. The eyebrows. I donated you some eyebrows. I forget you what did. city we were in, but they look very nice. You could even tuck them behind your ears. Vegas, we were in Vegas, Vegas. and we were in Vegas and the double O shit show, which shout out to double O shit show for all their support. Y'all there's a Courtney collection. Now go buy some, I'm no help gear, please. <clears throat> Real quick. And then we're kicking them off. Angie Smith fajitas or no. I'm all in fajitas, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I mean, kick them off. Kick like them off. who doesn't, I, I'm just concerned at who doesn't like fajitas. Me. Push them across the table. Let the steam go up. This beard will smell. Why don't great. you bring them out steamless? They make they make smokeless fire pits now. They're Why called tacos bring... all carbone. Wild. That would be like a. Uh, well, I can't say it on the show. You live a lot I mean, closer it's, to in me. it's in your tortilla. It is literally fajita meat in a tortilla served yeah. to you on a plate called tacos all, carb all carbone. That's the most Texas thing I've ever heard. Fuck off. Erica, double O, double o Shit Show said that's why Erica's so good because she can see the whole track. You know it. I got one eye yeah. on the tree and another eye on my competitor. <laughs> hey, if you love Eric Anders, if you hate her, go buy double O Shit Show gear. We don't yeah. care. Use code cross eyed for a discount. Use code PE no help or some shit like that. Well, that is not nice, man. <laughs> it's not. It's I've, I've whipped people's it's ass funny. for less, so watch your mouth. Anyway, Look. Steven Jackson's going to be embarrassed that we went this long. We appreciate him letting the children play tonight. We're so sorry you had to be in Brazil. He has never been on when I'm on. I'm just glad that I got on on the right day because Courtney told me Thursday. And I'm like, wait a minute. The show's coming on now. I did. I said Thursday. I didn't even say Tuesday. I was the worst. <laughs> Whatever. She's here. It's Rookie. fine. Rookie. I'd like to thank Richard Freeman for twisting his beard. I'd like to thank Victor Alvarez. Y'all tune in to the Snowbirds this weekend on Flow Racing. Angie, we are so glad that you are well. You are the most badass bitch ever. Erica, yeah, I... She's badass too. She is badass. But if I say it, people hate me for it. God dang it. I'll say it and I don't care. As Richard Freeman says, baddest bitch on the planet. That's right. And that's her. Matthew, <laughs> thank you so much for dealing with this. We're so sorry. Tell your wife we're sorry. Lyle Barnett, we love you. Love y'all. Uh, did you only have two beers tonight, or is the counter? Four. No, the counter's Four. off. 
Okay, Gunther's gone. Yeah. All right, we're gonna shake and, and bake on three. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna we're gonna, clo we're gonna close out with the video of when I won the burnout competition at, at uh two four four hours of the mullets two years ago. Matt, roll that beautiful bean footage. Shake and bake. Shake and bake. That was huge. Give it up one more time for the ball, Regals! 